you know, we just break it down, and again, I've dissected that uh, that Alex Gibbs tape, and I had the opportunity to follow him around for four or five years, and um, the things that, that really are important there, you know, you take a look at that, you just go through, I broke it down into those different objectives, and those are the things that, you know, you take a look at, and you I won't talk much philosophy with you, but they're important. One of the things that we always talk about with our guys is we have to stop the penetration. Have to stop it. The big thing that we talk about in our zone play and in our running game is we want no heels in the backfield. We don't want any negative plays. A negative play to us is we've gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Okay, so that's that's really big with us. And, and as you can see there, we go through those philosophies. We talk about no negative plays. I think, man, the one thing, and I'll demonstrate this on the board and as we go through the different fronts and stuff, but the thing that helps us out the most is we really, we focus on bringing the running back to us. So in the offensive line, we're going to declare it. And we worked so hard at that. And I think that's the one thing that has allowed us to have the success we've, we've garnished in the running game. We bring the ball carrier to you. And if you watch the Alex Gibbs tape and all that, uh, you know, he's big about that. We do not want to bury that track of that running back. Okay? And when we talk about track, I can use any of these pencils. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Okay? When we talk about that track, whoa, I got my hand in there too. <laughs> How about that? Quick, right here. Okay? So draw this up. Okay? That track, he's setting about seven yards deep. That's his depth. That track will not vary, and that's a, that's a key. We do not want one of those backs that you talked about, Tom. We want a no bullshit back. If we have a back that's dipping, okay, that, that's incorrect. And one of the things that our head coach allows me to do in the running game, and, and he's a big control guy, but he allows me to really really control these guys and if that track is off I'm gonna let that running back know that hey that will not work you cannot play in our system so that track has to be right at the crack of his ass is he gonna take a drop step or is he going what he does coach yeah he just he just opens up right to it he takes a little bit what we call just a J step all right and then he opens up right to the crack of that that tight his ass now if you're to your weak side that's the thing we talked about, the beauty of the, the wide zone, man, is you tie it into, it's a balanced, you know, it's a balanced deal. You don't know which side we're running, okay? And that's the beauty of that. And if we're running over here to tie it into what we're talking about, we got the imaginary tied in over here. I'll get better with this board as I go on. But there it is there. That's the sprint spot over here, okay? And our splits, man, just so you know, we're 22 inches, 22 inches, and here we might go, you know, two feet. Sometimes we'll max split at three. When we're running the, the wide zone, our splits tend to be right at 22 inches. We just tell them, I do not want a variation. 22 inches, we're looking for that. There's the track of that back. What was your uh, that C gap split right there? This, we're, we're here, we're A gap, we're 22, B, we're 22. We can go 22 here up to three. Yeah, yeah, 22 inches up to three foot split. Okay, but that's the beauty of the the wide zone. It gives you that balanced look, and defenses have to protect. Okay, they have to protect that. And you know, Alex Gibbs would, you know, we we tell you, you know, it's a, that's the perfect world, and we think the same thing about it. It's a perfect world. You know, you have to flank her out here, your X, and then fullback. We'll. Uh, We'll do a lot of different things with our fullback. I will motion him across, Rand will steal, okay, because we do protect your edge. Uh, and you have to do that. You have to incorporate that in somewhat to your wide zone. We're going to protect the edge as often as we can. So we'll set the fullback to zero. Everything that we have, even numbered, sets our tight to the side, to the right side, and also our flanker unless we tell him to move over. Okay, so we, we just do that by formation. If we want to set our full back in a strong, we'd say zero, which keeps our tail back in the eye. We go zero strong. Okay, now we go zero strong. He lines up right here. He splits inside leg of that tackle. Okay, we go zero weak. 
Okay, we're still speaking to the tight end, zero weak. Now we're telling the fullback where to go. And now he comes over here in the zero weak position. Okay, so that's just to give you some clues there in terms of what we do with our formation stuff. But that, that's the beauty of the wide zone, man, is that it gives you that balanced attack, and we've become very good at it. We're running the ball quite well with this. How deep is your fullback? Coach, we usually set him heels at five. Okay, heels at five with our fullback. Okay, and, that, and that's the thing we talk about the tailback read, and we'll get into that when I get up on the board here some more. Uh, but we're going to declare the read, and we'll go through all that, just going through these objectives real quick with you. And the thing that we have to really key, you talk to your quarterback coaches and all that, and you have to watch this on film, all right? The thing that we, we have to have, all right? Whoa. Might be better on it. Three-sport okay. Kind of a neat thing. You got to watch the pressure on it. Okay, we'll leave the fullback out of it for right now. All right, because we're talking quarterback. But there's that sprint spot. Okay, the crack of tight end. Okay, and our quarterback, he has got to open up to that seat the ball as deep as he can. All right, so he'll open up right to it. And then he's got to deepen his up and run his boot look. And he has got to hold a man and a half. That's supposed to be one half there, guys. That's actually a two. All right. So that's what we have to have our quarterback do. What's the depth? He's going, uh, I mean, what are you telling as far as? He, he, when he opens up, coach, he opens up right to it. He should be seeding that ball. We, we talk to him in terms of you ought to be three steps, okay? Three steps back to as deep as you can get that ball seated. And what we, we instruct our tailback to do, okay? And we talk a lot with our quarterbacks. That we remind that quarterback that he is 75% to the hole. Our tailback is slow to go, okay? And you've got to watch that. You get tailbacks, man. All right, they're not going to take that J step. They're going to open up right to it now, and it just disrupts our match. <coughs> and our quarterback's not getting that ball back deep enough. Okay, so our tailback, he's 75 percent. He's slow to go to the hole because we want to get everything established up front, and that's key right there. There's one thing I can leave you with that that's big time important right there is that 75 percent of the back. Okay, but coach, to answer your question, you know precisely. Most of the times our mesh, we're, it's right at the five yard point, okay? So depth of five yards, we try to get that quarterback to. And then after that? And then after that, coach, we want him to deepen up to seven, okay? All right, so it's, you know, it's the handoff, and he gets, takes good handoff, make sure it's seated, then he wants to get vertical. He wants to press it vertical somewhat, and then he wants to deepen out here on the boot. As you'll notice on our quarterback keep stuff, all right, that's what we've done. We stole this from Denver. We've gotten really good at it. We're not concerned if we're running quarterback keep. Let's say we got the slam drag over here. We're in a zero week. Okay, and that fullback, he's slamming that defensive end, let's say, or that wand the back or in your 50 front, whatever you guys. And he'll block that guy. He'll block that guy, which allows what? That quarterback to get his depth, okay? And then here we've got, you know, off that, we've got the flat. Okay, we got our deep run back. Okay, and then over here, he improves. He's got that. He's got that. Okay, and that's probably drawn up a little too deep. Okay, so we're not concerned, really, if we ever hit this guy, our fullback, because we want this to take place first. And we want this to control this and control that half a man. We've got to control a, a man and a half hat on that backside. And my point, and I'm probably going out, you know, the, the long way, but guys, that is so important. We harp on our quarterback. Hey, you're not holding a man and a half. I mean, you're just, you're opening up, you know, you're seating the ball, and here you are, you're just lazy little, you know, boot fake. And hell, what do you get on the backside? You get everybody chasing. They're chasing it, okay? All right? 
because there's no threat over here. All right, now we get our quarterback to really boot out of there, and John Elway was the worst at it, and Alex Gibbs would tell you that. He had to jump Elway's ass for years because he wasn't more than half and a half back then. You call it, you call it half and a half. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, maybe a stupid question. I don't know. No, it's not. That no. defensive end right there, or your, mm -hmm. uh, you call that the, the full hat and the half? <laughs> right, Coach. We want all the players a yeah. half? That's I mean, a good that question. That's right. It's a damn good question. That one hat is that, that defensive end. We want to slow that D end down or the edge protector. And then we're looking, all right, depending upon what your coverage is, all right, if it's a two deep shell, okay, they're sitting in here, let's say it's a free safety, we want that sucker to peak for a moment. So there's our half a hat. So it's a very good question. It clarifies it, okay. Cover five, let's say this is just cover five. You drop it deep, you know, he's squatting, he's got the flat, okay. And that's the guy we're looking at is that quarterback holding him, you know, just for a pause second, we get him looking in. All right, he respects that, and then he's, and then he's taken on. So that's, that's, that's very true. That's our hat in the hat. Yes. Okay, so that answers that. But the, Q, the, the quarterback keep, the role of that is crucial, guys. And if you're not doing it, you're not watching it on film, in nine on seven and in team, and in your game film, you've got to really, you know, get into that quarterback, his responsibility. And that's the beauty of the white zone. Everybody, and I broke it down by objectives, everybody has an objective, they have a role. And the White House are, are crucial in it. The quarterback is crucial. So those are things that we constantly talk about, okay? All right? So that, that should clear up the quarterback deal, but we look at that very Coach, just hit next. You want to just leave that stuff oh, over okay. where you left? Oh, you okay. just push that Yeah, I saw that over here. Just push right the there. next, and you just yeah. go on the next, and don't worry okay. about racing. Okay. All right? The thing that you have to do on the wide zone, men, okay, and we'll get back here to the tailback roll. Okay, and we're on that wide zone, men. What we're gonna do is we're gonna expand the play side. Okay, and it's supposed to be an arrow here. I haven't figured this thing out yet. But we're gonna expand this side, the play side. Okay, we're gonna stretch that, in other words. We're gonna get that stretching. And then really what you see, what's really nice about the wide zone, okay, we tell that, a little bit better track there, Coach, okay, we tell that guy, that tailback, he's got, that's his track, it cannot vary, okay, no dip, no bow, no anything. And we're going to expand that, we're going to stretch that here for him, we want to bring the ball carrier to us, and then guys, if you look back here on this back side, we're going to cut the crap out of that because the beauty of the wide zone is everybody thinks that the guy is really cutting back. He's not cutting back at all. That tailback, he's got to press that, and then he's got one cut, and that's straight up. But if you can imagine this, you think with me here a little bit, you're stretching this so you get everybody flowing, and now your tailback's cutting. It looks like he's actually cutting back. And the key, my point is here, I hope that I make myself clear that on this back side, man, you have to expand that cut up. I don't want to call it a cut back, it's a cut up. He vertically cuts up. And the way that you do that is by overtaking and cutting. I find the offensive line, I find them, I find them a, half, a package of hot dogs. They're not cutting. And we have a big fat man's barbecue later in the year. But we really talk about that. And then these guys, you got to get them involved. We don't want to leave these guys out. We'll talk about that later some more. But hey, they've got to be involved and understand their role. They better cut off that first force or that eight half. And we do that on both sides. We cut wall, what we call cut wall. Okay. But where is the where is the big point here that I'm trying to make to you is that our onside has not been a problem. We get such great flow with our onside. It doesn't matter if we're running into a three technique or a one technique. We like to run it into the bubble, okay? And we'll sometimes consider where the strong safety is and, and call it over because we have that ability. We'll just go over. But guys, what we try to do is we are definitely going to cut this back side because we get so much over pursuit and then we cut back and that all of a sudden that back side is expanded because we got people on the ground, okay? That's, that's been the success of our 8 and 9. All right? That's been key for us. So, if you
you, and if you look here in those objectives, it says expand the back side, and that's what I was talking to, and that's your cut blocks. And the only way you're going to get good at cut blocks, man, is you have to work them. And, and we're really big on, on our drills. Everything has to be game light. We don't go out there in an individual period, you know, because we have an in individual period with the White House. They're doing cut wall, and we put our best safeties out there. And they have to go out there and stop, you know, and cut them and get them down and things like that. And our wide receiver coach, Larry Adams, does a hell of a job of that. So we have this broken down. When we're doing eight and nine wide zone, we have individual periods. And I brought some practice plans where our wide outs are working on wide zone, force blocking. Our running backs are over there on the strip with the running back coach, and he's working the track, and it cannot vary. Okay, no dip, no bows, and things like that. And then the old line, we work all of our individual stuff. But it's a no bones deal, guys. We, we do not go out there and, you know, okay, white outs, you're going to work the white zone. Here's your scheme. Our, our white outs coach really good about that. And we've seen some really great blocking improvement on them. Okay. Again, we already talked about the balanced defense. We can run a weaker, strong threat. And then we tie it into the passing game. Okay. And now, now what I'd like to do is we get into the nuts and bolts about it in terms of the ball carrier. Um, you know, the track, the old line, we're going to bring the ball carrier to us. And we're big on the next thing I want to share with you here, if you take a look at it right there, is the key, gentlemen, is back there to double the bubble. I just call it double the bubble. It's point of attack. Okay? And that's what we've gotten really good at. So we'll draw this up versus your 50 wood. Okay? And we'll go through here. We'll just go through that handout. That's that's our nose. It's supposed to be an end. Okay, this is Sam. Mike. Anything that we go. All of our strong side backers, men, we give them male names, and our weak side backers, we give female names too. Okay. Our split, anywhere where you coach, wide out coaches, okay, it's anywhere from 8 to 10 yards. Okay. We're going to go 8 to 10 yards on the split of Z, our flanker. All right. Here we're not so worried about our X, but we will not take him any further than, say, 10 to 12. All right, we keep him within 10 to 12. Okay. Now, in this front, man, what I'll do now is I'll talk specifically to the running backs coach and, and, and the ideas that we've already talked about. The track is so important. Um, we do not want a kid that dips. We get a kid that's dipping. You know, we talked about that already. That dip, that will not work. If we get a young man in the backfield that's not 75 to the hole, that won't work. Okay? So we really are stickers on that. So we watch that constantly. But gentlemen, Alex Gibbs teaches two reads. I teach two reads. But really between myself and the running backs coach, we go off a primary read. And we're going to declare that primary read. If the young man, Adam Matthews, was good enough to look to the secondary read and he got to a point where he was really comfortable with that, we would go ahead and help him out with that. But we came off, Tom, we're teaching one read. It was a primary read. We never read linebackers, gentlemen. Never read a linebacker because of why. They're outside contained guys most of the time anyway. So we're not going to re read a linebacker. We're going to read this DN. Okay? So this defensive end, men, is your first read as your primary read, and if I was a little better on this board, I'd put a number one up there. And that's that's our bubble. Okay, and those objectives I talk about, you know, double the bubble. We're going to control the read and bring the back to you. You want no bones about it. And this is where, Tom, we can get into all the techniques that we use here because we've gotten pretty damn good at it. But that's our primary read, so what we would do here, obviously, okay, we want to get that eighth guy involved, all right? So we work him to cut wall to safety. And again, those guys are asked to read coverages up there, coach. You know, if we get a cover, we get a cover five look, you know, versus a cover eight look, 
Okay, and this guy, this guy is really working off here with him as he runs down there. And he's working with him, and this guy's dropping, and he's really soft. Okay, boom, he'll turn and take that. Okay, so we're reading it on the run. We read the coverages because we will, we men, we do not, you know, we're not concerned about the corner, obviously, unless he's forcing. We'll make the corners make the tackle. Okay, so we're gonna block that eight, nine hat in the box kind of a guy. All right, now on here we're going to stretch the Sam. Okay, and what I mean by stretching the Sam, I, I know, okay, as a tight end now, in this look, okay, let's say that he's outside shoulder of me, I'm still going to get that stretch. I do not step right at him. I take my little balance step, okay. I'm looking to get my hat one, well, it's actually half an inch outside the sternum. And that's what we talk about constantly is hat placement. Okay, so I want to stretch that sand because that sand is a containment type of guy and he's going to what with you? He's going to stretch with you. So that's what we want and we're really sticklers of that in the line. If we, we, we get a sand or a tight end that's blocking a sand and he's always wanting to try to turn him out, we don't like that. We're giving our back, you know, and he's not reading that, but we're giving him a one-way go. So we really teach, you know, boom hard, get that hat outside and then duck on through there and we get that sand to stretch. So we're really stretching this we get that look, okay? Now if that Sam wants to try to come inside, all right, <laughs> you know, they might be stunting or things like that, but we're always here first, and then if he tries to come inside, we're going to climb hard with our inside foot, okay? And we try to dig him out of there. But we like what I'm getting to, man, just to clarify my point here and my objective, is we are going to stretch that Sam. We're going to stretch the shit out of this here. Okay, there's your primary read, man. If he sneezes inside, sneezes inside, he is where? Outside. Okay. If he sneezes outside, 75% slow the hole, boom. He's up. And that's our read. That's our primary read. And where's the key lie in the outside zone, the wide zone? It lies right here, guys. We're going to double that bubble, okay? I work really hard on the guards, all right? Let's say that this is the five technique, the defensive end. I won't pull that in the picture so you guys can't see. All right, I know as a tackle now that I am blocking this outside half of the cylinder. We talk about a cylinder, okay? So this being the defensive end, all right, that's a cylinder, okay? When we talk about that cylinder, and I am that right tackle. I've got the outside one half. I apologize, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. It's pressure. You, put, you gotta push it hard. Okay. All right. You do better, you do better than you. It's killing me. Uh, you know, I'm used to those whiteboards, but I like this. This is good shit. Okay. But there's there's that, and there, let's say this is the tackle. Okay. And here's your guard. All right. Obviously, the splits there were 22 inches. But I've got that cylinder, I'm going to divide that baby in half, and that tackle knows, that right tackle knows, I've got inside help. So if that defensive end goes inside, I don't worry about it, okay? I do, I'm not concerned with it. So he's working that outside half of the cylinder, we always tuck our inside hand, okay? We always tuck our inside hand. Our elbow is always tucked. I never ever want to see a lineman out here outside the cylinder. He's always inside. Okay, and what we're going to do with that, let's say that that defensive end works with me as a tackle, okay, and he's working with me, I'm getting good stretch on him, I ask them to declare it within their second step as a lineman, I want to declare it. So what does declare mean to an offensive tackle? If that defensive end is stretching with him, okay, and he's going, we're staying in our demeanor, we use a push-pull, okay, we use a push-pull. And I tell you what, you see our guys crank it over. The only way you get good at it, man, is you have to work it every day. We drill this in individual period. I mean, I might drill it 15, 20 minutes sometimes, you know, with outside zone stuff. Okay, so we get that defensive end stretching with us. He's stretching, boom, I want him to clear it right now. And I tell you what, it's violent. We just pull it and we push it. When do you make that decision again? He's got to make it within his first two steps. 
Okay, that tackle, boom, boom, what is he doing with me? Okay, because we're going to bring the ball carrier to us. I don't want this guy, I don't want any bullshit back here. I don't want that tailback going, well, coach, you know, the read, uh-uh, buddy, that read was outside. It was declared. Okay, it was declared. Your tackle declared him right now. So don't give me that crap that you didn't have a read. Okay, and, you know, I'll watch it and take two, and I'll say, you know what, yeah, maybe, okay, I'll give you one. That wasn't a very good read on that one you were talking about. But you missed a hole on these other three. You know, it's a bullshit story, end of story, end of discussion. So there's our read right there. Um, now we go to the guard, and we talk about that cylinder. Okay, now I've got the inside half of that cylinder. And what the guard is going to do, man, if you've watched the Bronco tapes, and I, I changed this up when I first came on board as the line coach at UNC. We used to run the 8 and 9. We always ran it. We didn't exactly have our reads down the way we do now, but we always ran the wide zone, okay? It's called our 38-39. But what we would allow our linemen to do was take an actual balance step, bucket step, and we turn. You cannot turn your shoulders. I, I, I argue this until the cows come home. What happens the minute you turn your shoulders and you got a guy that's an upfield kind of guy, he's going to press, press you into the backfield, now your heels are in the backfield. And guess what it just did, gentlemen? It that just destroyed your read. Your read is gone, your track is gone, your tailback will bow, he'll bubble, he'll bounce, he'll do all that kind of crap, so you cannot have that, all right? So we talk about that constantly. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Good to see you. Hey, you need to get some more, you know. What the hell are you doing? You know how coaches don't do that. Coaching is you. And if there's anything I can emphasize that I get really worked up about is, you know, I, I teach... I'm covered, I'm uncovered, and I teach different technique with their feet, okay, but you'll watch that Bronco tape, and I've watched it for hours, you still, like Tom, I've watched it for 10 hours a day, those Broncos, they're doing everything, they can cross over here, they can do all that, but their shoulders are square, the minute, and I have finally had to talk our head coach into this, you know, years ago, coach, the minute I get my shoulders turned, I've got no leverage, guys push me back in the backfield, and it's killing our read, it's killing our read. It's just disrupting our track. You cannot, cannot disrupt that track. And, and that's the thing that we've done so well, is we declare the bubble. So what does that guard do? Hell, he's uncovered. Okay? I don't care if that guard crosses over. I mean, if, if I'm uncovered and there's that, that five technique, all right, we tell him to spy the hip. I don't want him looking anywhere else. He's going to spy that hip. <coughs> so he's eyeballing that inside hip. Bless you, Coach. If any of that inside hip stays, all right, boom, I'm here, boom, I cross over, and if that hip is there, I've got what? I've got the inside half, and I'm going to declare it. Where is he going to try to declare it? If it's stretching, you just coach down up a second. You didn't know you were going to be any kid walking in late, did you? <laughs> but I'm that guard, and working with my tackle, i got the inside half, he's got the outside half. If there's some cylinder left, okay, I'm coming over, I cross over, stay square, boom, I two-hand it. And I declare it outside. And I mean, I'm going to go ahead and declare it hard. And you go ahead and sit down, Coach. But that's, that's what we do right there is we declare that. No, don't sit down, Coach. Stay up. Okay. Oh, got a question? I want, I, want to see, I want to see the tackle step on him. Okay. And then, I'll, you know, we'll just guard step on him. <laughs> get him all. Yeah. Get him all. That'll work. Yeah. Let, me hold, let me hold those glasses. <laughs> Our, our tackle, and if you want, we can go outside and demonstrate some of this further, but if our tackle, okay, he's in a five technique, all right, what we ask him to do is he's blocking that outside half, okay, so he's in a balanced step right here. His outside foot, my outside foot, should be basically within the instep of his outside foot. And my second st step is going to go to his, his crotch, okay, and it's, we're going to come right here. Okay, right to the crotch. Okay, let's let's move his reaction. Okay, okay. 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 I'm okay. here. Step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now he's 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 fine. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. so he's he's, he's uh, fine outside. So now okay, he's fine outside. Okay, I'm tucked here. Now we're going to it. All right. Boom. Okay. Hard. And I mean hard. It's violent. Right. Now let's okay. go inside. Okay. He goes inside. All right. My guard is where? He's he's got uh, my, my guard's taking. Yeah. Well, now I begin to climb. And I stay on my angle of departure. Okay, I climb. And that's what I was explaining to you about the guard. No, are you going to step back in? Some? No. Oh, no. 
You're not going to help no. push him into the guard? No. I've got the outside half. If the outside half disappears, it's gone. It's no longer mine. I'm going to climb the linebacker level. Okay. I'm the second level. No, I'm not going to turn back inside. Okay. Now let's be the guard of the thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I know I know where exactly where you're yeah. going with this question. We no, worked on it really I'm hard. Not kick out. I no, you're not on video. No, you're yeah. not. This so he's he's outside, your, your hips go away. Okay. I can I can cross over, I'm open, I can cross over. Your hips go away. Right. Hit. If I cannot declare within my third step, I climb. So he's got three steps. He's got three steps. Cover man's got two. Cover man's got two before we declare a read. Okay. Now if we if, if that read is not declared within two, I get pretty pissed off. Because what the hell are you doing to the guy? Okay, all right. Did he not stretch with you? Well, then boom. All right, so he's playing you up pretty solid. What are you going to do to him? You know, he what are you going to do to him? Play, Try to be clear. Play tackle up there, right? Mm -hmm. tackle, right? Okay, you want to be the off tackle. Off. I'm the guard? Yeah, you're the okay. off tackle. Okay. Now, I'm this five. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm watching you I'm here. trying not to give you a good read. So right. he's going to come on off the outside half of my sternum uh -huh. right here. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Right. What yes, you're sir. saying right there? Yep. Now, I'm going to sit right here on his inside eye mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we got? Okay, here and I I'm go. Gonna, you know what I'm saying? I'm going right. to try to right. get a tweener yeah. right here. Yeah, and a hanger. Yeah. Hold him right there. We, 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 won't, we won't accept hangers because here's what I'm going to do. All right? I see that inside hip. I've got half the cylinder to block, mm -hmm. Coach. Boom. I'm coming over, and I'm declaring you. I am going to push you outside as I climb to my backer. Okay, so you going you gonna push him to, to him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep on going. Exactly. And he's gonna wind up cutting on the boom. He now can't he's got come off anyway. No. Okay. No. Okay. No. So he's gonna wind up right. you're working to him and then you're, you're exactly right, coach. He cannot come off because that outside half of the cylinder is still really? remaining. He has cylinder to block. If there's any cylinder remaining to block, he's got to block it. Okay. okay. Now you're going to tell your back on that to hug that block right there so you can come off with this back right here and I have to chase him back there. Yeah, I tell that, that I tell that back one thing. That's his read. Okay. And we're going to bring that ball carry to you. So we have to make that determination. He's going to bring it to this double team right sure. here. So sure. that back or you, you pick up that back right there. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. And that this is where we get really good at it. We're sticklers on this. If that guard is pulling over, okay, and I'll go through all of our nomenclature with this. This is called a slug. Okay, we're slugging the point of attack here. And the slug is between the guard and the tackle. All right, it's a combo zone scheme, man zone scheme between our guard and tackle. It's called a slug. Okay, we're going to slug that. If I've got any part portion of that hip exposed, half the cylinder, I'm coming right here as I climb on my angle departure. Okay. And I'm pressing that outside. The slug is, is this guy's just hanging on combination. Oh, that combination. Yeah, it's a combination between the guard and tackle, okay, on the defensive end. So we call it slug. If we're working on a different front and say your nose is over, we would now work a gap yeah. or a stick. Right. Okay, I'll explain that as we go through these different fronts. Yeah. That that's really good questions. And that you know your five technique, your defensive coaches, you know that five is supposed to remain a five. Right. You know he's fighting his ass off. Defense is all gap cancellation, so he's fighting his ass off to remain in a five. Well, we're not going to let him remain in a five. We're going to come over there and boom, and we're going to hit it hard. And we're going to declare that read. Uh -huh. We're going to try to knock his ass out. And you'll see in our film, our guards get pretty good at that. They got that inside cylinder set in there. They're going to declare it. I always preach that. You've got to declare the read. And our guards do a really good job of that. And, and I don't want them, you know, to really get their shoulders turned. Okay, so it's one of these things. Boom. Okay, and keep your shoulders on that angle of departure as you work up your linebacker. Okay. So we work hard on that. It's a good question. Okay, no. Okay. Why you doing that? Okay. So if I can get this one to be a little more accurate for you. Well, it's probably me, Coach. Well, <laughs> first time I've been <laughs> on this. Yeah, it's good it. Yeah, I stuck it in my pocket. We're, we're not as high tech. Well, I'm just going to tell y'all a little more. I learned that when we were in Alabama. All y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Here's as y'all. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah. Now, uh. I want to, I want to see him the four technique or basically the five technique that comes on. Okay, mm -hmm. and I want yeah. to put the guard. You know, one now mm -hmm. how, how his okay. overtake. Okay. Now let let me uh, as as we go through this. Okay, this like I said, it'd be a slug, and I won't try to write it up there because I know that I probably don't have it mastered yet. But that. Inside half, okay, we read that hip. 
and the thing that we, we teach that guard, okay, boom, let's say, you know, we're a little tight corners here, but I've stepped, okay, one, two, three, hips not there, I climb to linebacker level. But gentlemen, I never peek back in. This is a nine hole scheme. I'm never going to climb up. I'm going to stay on my angle departure. So if that hip goes away, I'm climbing on my slug like this. That's my angle departure. How are you going to get there? Once you clear that first level, you going to waddle to it, or what do you tell them? We, we, stay, we stay, anytime we get the linebacker level, and it's a good question, Coach. In the line, we have my covered rules, uncovered rules. Okay, if I'm uncovered, I can cross over, but I never scissor. Here's a scissor. Okay, the minute I have any kind of pressure on me, my ass is in the backfield. Oh. I never went that track of that backer. Okay, excuse me, the running back. So it's here, and then I want to take this, all right, get some room here. I want to take this, and I want to shoot it, okay, to that cylinder upfield, and I call it a stair step. I always want to see my lineman stair stepping. This is not a stair step. That's nothing but horizontal plane work. You're just working on the lateral. I don't want it, okay? I want to see those linemen get over there, take those big steps, gather up the ground, and I want to see them start working up, okay? And we'll tell, you know, pressure up field or push pull, tuck the inside hand, we'll push pull, rip, declare all that stuff. So you know, really, in, I know Tom knows all this stuff, but mm -hmm. my benefit. Uh, you, once you clear that first level, mm -hmm. you're really not worried about your base until you're going to make contact. I mean, you worry about all that stuff. Yeah, that was your question. Come on, we're going to gather. All this. I you use, gather before you make I use a gather drill. Yeah, we use this a lot. And that's what I was getting to. You know, we'll let those linemen, they can do anything they need to, you know, to cross over quick, rip, and go, all that stuff. But, man, when you get to second level, you start gathering down. Okay, we call it gathering. We use a, a gather drill. Right. And I do not want to see linemen at second level here. Up tall. Yeah, I want to see them down here gathering, and I want to see them, their shoulders, if you really took a look at this in our film, and I hope we're pretty good at it, our shoulders should be a mirror of the back, okay? So our shoulders should be a mirror of the back. So hopefully he's setting, you know, on that same plane, same angle relationship. And then boom, when that back squares up, about that time you ought to see the what? The lineman squaring up to that second level player, okay? And we use a lot of gather drills. Because our linemen, <laughs> they'll go out there, they'll get through that first level. You know, things look pretty good and they get out there to, line, to that linebacker and here they are. Yeah. And guess what happened to them? Hell, that linebacker's already what? He's already gathered. <laughs> so we work a lot of gather with that. But the key in this particular front, there's the read. He's never a read. There's your primary read. There's your secondary read. Never read linebackers. So our secondary read becomes that nose guard. Now, when you say secondary read, and I know you told me talked about a while yep. ago, you really don't get it. But is he more or less with y'all? I mean, reading that first read and all of that, looking for the looking for yeah. off color jersey, right, looking coach. for so I mean, he's exactly he doesn't see anything and he yeah. knows that guy's back. Yeah. He's hanging exactly. And Adam Matthews was really good at that. Okay, he rushed like I said about 1,600 yards last season, broke 20 different rushing records, and he was really good about that. He he knew his first read. He said, Coach, you guys are doing a great job of declaring that first read for me. And I was curious about, I said, well, Adam, you know, I teach a secondary read. I said, how do you feel about it? He says, Coach, he says, let me tell you something about the secondary read. I said, I'm, I'm here to listen. I want to learn. I mean, you're the running back. Hell, I'm not. He says, Coach, it's a feel. I don't really look at it. It's a feel. And if, if this guy, let's say, you know, he stretched really hard, okay, and we've got a good stretch on the five technique, he said, Coach, it's just a feel, and then I'm cutting behind it. Because I'm 75, I'm slow to the hole. And that's the thing that Adam really pressed in my mind. And I, I've been with Adam now for five years. He said, Coach, I was terrible on the wide zone to begin with because I was too fast. And it wasn't allowing alignment to really set it up. And he said, the biggest thing that helped me out, you know, in, in, in gathering the concept of this play is I really had to be patient and slow myself down on my track and allow everything to stretch, okay, and allow the backside to expand. We talk about stretching the play side, okay, and expand the backside with our cuts. Okay, so now it looks like that back's actually cutting back. He's just cutting up because you expanded this, okay, you stretched that, excuse me, and you expand that by cutting. 
Okay. So real quick, back to that guard. And I know you want to ask ask some questions about the the five technique coming in and stuff. But you know, let's let's stick with that point where he's stretching for a moment. If he stretches and I cannot get to him on my third step, I continue to climb on my angle of departure. Okay, the linebacker look. All right. But if that cylinder there, it's just a real simple, easy read. And I'll step, and I'll, younger kids, they'll ask me, well, coach, you know, I was doing, well, you're wrong. I said, is that hip there? Yes, sir, it's there. Okay. And they're not like all the Texas kids here that always say, yes, sir. But say, yeah, coach, that hip's there. I said, well, then why aren't you on that cylinder? So if that hip is there, you're, you're not declaring it. If that hip goes away, okay, then what's the next thing I look for on that guard? So I look for that good angle departure. Okay. And if I see that guard, hip goes away and guard turns up, doesn't work. Doesn't work. Okay, so we have to stay on a good angle of departure. All right. So that's our slug. We call this a slug here in this particular front. This is base or base stretch. We always use that word base stretch. Okay, this again is cut wall. Now over here on the back side, this is what we refer to as an A block. Okay, that's an A block. Whatever you did, Kevin, kind of helped out. Okay, so on this A block, what we're going to do here, all right, is we're going to A this. So the center, again, he's got that outside half of that cylinder, the nose. So he's here, all right. He crosses, steps upfield, doesn't cross over, doesn't scissor, and he's blocking that outside half. If that outside half stays with him, he works that. And this guy is what I call a full view A block. Okay? And he's always keeping it in mind where that peg backer is or that inside weak side backer. Alright? And again, but the beauty of this is I've already taught this to my guard. He's being taught the same thing with the hip. Okay? So if that hip goes away, where's he going? He's climbing the peg. Okay, he's climbing the peg right there. And we don't see a lot of 50 front. All right. Well, your center, your center technique same as your tackle. Yeah, center okay. technique is same as the tackle. We want to try to, all right, on that nose. Obviously, we want to get that nose cut off. Same yeah. point. Just outside yeah. the sternum. Outside, outside the sternum. You now, if we call toss or pitch, everybody's trying to jump hook. But if we're just running our, our base nomenclature eight and nine, which is our wide zone, it's the, all those rules that I talked about. With, okay, and it applies to everybody up front. Okay, it applies to everybody up front. And then we can get our fullback involved in here. I always want to try to protect the edge. Okay, so let's say we're in a zero. Say we went zero, and we use our motion. This is if you're sitting here in a split back set. This is A. This is B. This is C. Okay, and we have to instruct our fullbacks a little bit, but they're pretty smart. This, for example, would be B, okay, and we'll motion him if we want to, or he just knows that he's got a what? He's got an inward seal. Okay, but we use a lot of motion sometimes, counter motion, and we'll go B left. So he'll go B left, all right, and he is to set down right there and square up, okay? Now what this tackle does, he knows that he's got the end will seal. Okay, so he stays on his eight hole track in this case, balance step. Okay, and he's working the linebacker level. Let me and see he, that. Did you go over that already? No. Adam. Let me see that backside tackle. Okay, the backside tackle, he knows he has an end will seal. Okay, we're going to protect the edge. So that backside tackle, left handed stance. Okay, he's just going to open. We want to gain ground, okay, and lose some ground. We lose a little bit of ground, but we gain ground too. So he steps right here. I never want to see that step come back here and open his shoulders up. Look for that very carefully. So left hand in stance, he's here. But the shoulders are square, okay. I'm down, chest over knee, okay. I got the V in the knees, and now I'm going to work hard on a crossover step, <coughs> okay. Not a scissor step. Don't ever want to see the lineman scissor. Get into a scissor, I'm done. So it's always here. It's boom, and then bam. I'm working up with that, and I keep this tucked, always inside tucked. Okay? And I'm really chasing for this peg. That's true, I'm really chasing for in this particular front. 
So I've got in will seal. I'm chasing for peg. I know I won't get there. Okay. So I've got a good angle of departure to that wand of backer. Okay. So we've got the end will seal. Okay. We got the cut wall there going to force. We've got force going here. And we got everybody accounted for. The <coughs> base stretched here. We slugged here up to Mike, and I'll clear this in a minute. And then we controlled the nose and the peg backer there with what we call an A block. Okay? So that's A. And then over here, this call would be SIF. You said A, the nose back side? Yeah, this is the A, a block, coach. Yeah. That's your A block. Yeah. And this is your SIF. The tackle is sifting. Now he's sifting, Tom, because he has an animal seal. Okay, you guys, you got an animal seal coming back side. Alright, so he'll end will seal and that tackle will go ahead and call sit. And it's one call that I don't hear that often, but you know, our kids have gotten really good at it. With the younger guys, I become pretty sticky about it. I want to hear the sit call. A lot of our vets they won't call sit because we know we're in a two back set. Okay? And by our scheme of things we've always got or nine out of ten times we've got an end will seal. So that tackle is a little lazy sometimes in calling sit. And I'll jump them every now and then just to remind them, let them know, hey, <laughs> I'm still thinking about you. But we'll sift call that, and he's working the second level. Same thing with the gather. As he goes up, second level, you know, all this stuff we talked about, first level, he gets up to second level, I want to see that gather. But, man, we're, we're running. We are running. What's he doing specifically? He gets to that, that... I want him cut. I don't know what you... Yeah. Peg, yeah, peg. What, what do you guys call him? I, I just call it Willie back, but okay. I, I, yeah, see, we're we're you're saying calling like it a four, so yeah. I mean, it's a fifty-two. Yeah, I mean, I would call it Willie in the end, but it doesn't right. matter. Sure, um, he gets that pace, you know, he's probably gone. Mm -hmm. So once he gets to that level, mm -hmm. and right. like you said this early, is he turning back looking for that Willie coming right there, or I don't want to. I, the I don't want to see him do one of these deals, okay? Because the minute I turn my shoulders, I tell that linebacker exactly what's going on and then you'll give that linebacker a run alley. Okay? Because now I can't work back to that He'll guy. He'll come underneath you. Right. That's the run alley. He's going to come underneath me. So I stay square. Okay, I just gather myself and I slow down. You start working your eyes back. Mm -hmm. And I start working my hat back. But I don't work my body back. Okay? I'm staying on that good angle departure. And our kids do a pretty good job of that. We know, we know that Willie He's going to be, you know, he's going to be running on this outside backer. He's going to be over top unless there's some kind of stunt going on. Okay. So our kids, they get to second level, and they'll start to gather and slow down and pick up their backers. Run that stunt off that right there. Your wet stunt, uh -huh. that's what you call it? Yeah. You want to... I can What's go that to, tack? Yeah, I can go to next here. Uh -huh. All right. Just with that tack, just go to right. this deal. Him and the fullback, I guess, be the two guys. Okay. Five technique in. Okay, whoever you want to call him. All right, we'll get this here, yeah. and we'll get this here. Okay, now we know that we're working a working a combo look out here with our fullback and tackle on the end. We'll seal. Okay, so it's sitting here. Let's say we we went B left. <coughs> okay, 38. This tackle. Balance steps, cylinder goes away, there's nothing to block. He stays on his angle departure and he's looking for a, that Wanda right now. He then becomes the end will seal and he's controlling the defensive end. All right? So that's how we would handle that. And then you have just the opposite of that. Okay? I guess I better put him at the other way. Okay, yeah. That would and that, that would be. Uh, you mean coming on in? Right. So we get this now. Okay. And then your wand is staying here. All right. Now the fullback. He is now just easier to show it to motion. We don't always use motion. Fullback is now edge protector. Right. He's always an edge protector. Okay. And he's got to hang on that end. So you just going to try to wash him all? I mean, just. We want to try to get him cut off, coach. He's already sitting in a five technique. Right. Don't you dare let him become anything other than a five. Keep him out there. So that's what we do. He's sitting in a five technique. Okay. Come up here, coach. 
he's sitting in a five. I know that I've got an end will seal, but I'm stepping here, and then my next step is straight up field, okay? And I'm trying to keep him remain in a five. Are you technique. working vertically at that point, or you? Uh, you all right, all right. you'll see some. You'll see Go some. Turn yeah, over. you'll see some. Yeah, you'll see that. But thanks, coach. But my point on that is, I don't want to see it immediately, Kevin. Yeah. Okay. Because I want to see proper steps and proper angle. And after two or three steps, I see that I'm okay with it. Now, why do I harp on that so much? Because men. I do not want to see heels in the backfield. Don't want to see it. So I never want to see just your old, you know, pivot and turn. Don't want it. Okay. So you're exactly right. That raises a good question. We want to see this stair step first and then turn them into clear. Okay. Now the thing that we try to do on the backside, man, we don't try to do it. We do a pretty good job with it. Is we're going to. We're going to cut. For a second. We're going to cut. We cut, we cut a lot on the back side. You get your hand Full back and cut the left? Full back. Like, killing that guy. Killing that guy. Hey, listen, give it me, um, killing. go whatever Mr. Yeah. Aaron, get two big stars. We cut. Point, two, two, point, cut. Fill them up with coffee. We, we, we always have him. We always have him go. And I'll give you more. I'll always have him look on this for And we'll seal. He's looking for the inside. You can stay up there and walk. Inside knee to hit. We have a great full back. I mean, I'll tell you what. That guy can probably teach me three things on cut block. Yeah, the guy was good. Thanks. Ron, Ronnie Scott out of Windsor High School. So he's working through his inside knee? Yeah. Yeah. He's up there on an end with seal. Say we got him in motion. He settles down. All right. He sees it unfold in front. He's working that inside knee. He's cutting full body across. We never want to see him dive at the ground or at the, knee or at the feet. He's working across with the rip and he gets full body. Okay. So it's a full body cut. And you know, and like I said, going back to the individual drills, our running backs coach Keith Grable, he's going to work that on the strip and set a guy out there, and he's going to game plan some things. You know, ends coming inside, one is outside, all right, whatever your front is. And our fullbacks do a really good job with that. But getting back to your point there, Kevin, one of the things that we we clarify very carefully is I do not want to see any jump hook or pivot on eight and nine. Now, if I call a toss. I'll let you go jump hook. I mean, I'll let you come over here like that. But I'm calling eight and nine scheme. I want to see that proper technique working the cylinder and working up field. Okay, so that's what we, that's what we do off of that. Okay, all right. Give a second. Okay. Now, what other what other well what other fronts, guys? We can go through all the fronts. Well, we want to look at the third and seven, look on the side and side. Okay. Now, do you have any, have any questions? I mean, if just kind of keep on track here with this hand up. Kevin, I brought you one too. Please. I mean, Harry. Okay. Um, look at the tailback objectives. Key to this play is the read of the tailback, the track. We talked extensively on the track. Don't allow your tailback to bubble. You know, getting back to the tailback objectives there. And then we teach the reads. So we've incorporated the read scheme. And then we'll go all the different fronts. We'll continue to talk about the read scheme. The big point again, guys, is declaring the read. We have to declare the read. And in that first front, that regular 50 that we had drawn up to begin with, the read is obviously the defensive end. We're going to read the end. So that's where we get into that slug. And we're going to declare that very, very quickly. We want to bring that back to us, all right? We, we don't want any guesswork in the hole. You go back to your running backs, you know, your objectives. We don't want any guesswork. I do not want to see a back, okay? It's coming in here, and all of a sudden, before he presses that, you know, you get some of that stuff. He's not sure what he's doing. We don't, we don't want that. In fact, I nicknamed a young man. <laughs> we ended up uh, cutting him. I nicknamed him ACL. He was a running back. I was afraid he was going to blow out his ACL. Hell, he cut five times in the backfield. Drove me nuts. <laughs> yeah, so we I, don't know anybody like that. I, I used to go over here and put, put my shoe right in his ass. I call him ACL because he'd get back there, and then, you know, I'd see a dip, and then I, I'd see that. Oh, what the heck are you doing? You got your sprint spot. It's the crack, okay, of the tight end, or it's a crack of the imaginary tight end to the weak side, and you better get there. I don't want any dancing around. And I want to make sure that you're 75% slow to the hole. 
Okay, and he just couldn't understand that concept. And guess what? He wouldn't work in our running scheme. We we couldn't use him. And he knew that, and he ended up transferring somewhere to a uh, another Division One AA school, and he's doing he's doing very well. But he's not an eight and nine hole runner. And he's not a six and seven runner. He's not an inside zone. He was an outside zone kind of guy. So and he just didn't work in our in our scheme of things. So you know, no bubbles. You cannot disrupt that track. And the way, you know, and the thing that we look at very carefully, guys, is you might have a back, and he's doing some of that. And then, you know, you start chewing your running back's ass, and then all of a sudden, we find that, well, it's not the running back's fault. The center's getting pushed back, okay? Or our heels are in the backfield, and now the back's got to cut off of it before he gets to his sprint spot. So you really, you know, you want to be careful, I guess my point is, you know, it's a whole concept of things. Is the offensive line doing their job? Yeah, they did their job. It's the back's problem. Or, hey, the back was working to a sprint spot, but he got a guy blown up in his face. So he had to do that. So those are things we look at very carefully. So we define the track, the tight end surface or no tight end surface. We just talked about that. That's the tight end surface. Okay, define that track. And then if there's no tight end, it's that imaginary tight end. Okay, and his track doesn't vary. Okay, so we want to see that same thing. So we talk about that in terms of objectives with the back. Then we use that, again, his feet are at seven. I think I already mentioned that. It's a short drop step, okay? Running back here is in a two-point. He's a short drop steps right there. And then he's 75% to the hole on his track, okay? Run under control, and I think our backs do a good job of that. And then involved in that, too, I put there on the very bottom, you know, identifying the fullback's role. And we use our fullback in a lot of different ways. We won't always use him on an end will seal, okay? And we can set, for example, we can set zero weak, okay? And that would put us like that. Zero weak, so now we're not using any motion, okay? And he knows right off the snap count now, he's got the end will seal. We can set him in the eye, okay? He can set him in the eye, and he knows from the eye position he can still end will seal on the snap of the ball. Okay, he's on end will seal. All right, we can motion him from the eye, and he knows he's on end will seal. We can set him strong, okay, and this would be C left, zero strong, A, B, C left, and will seal. Okay, we can set him here in the eye, F counter motion, 38. Okay, or one F counter motion, 39. All right, so we do a lot of things with incorporating our fullback in terms of his role. You say in will seal. You saying like in slash will backer seal? Correct. You got one of those two. Correct. Can't no. over, okay. Yeah, the fullback is this, and, and yeah, he's basically what the fullback becomes. He's our emo guy. Yeah. In man on the line, it may not always be a defensive end. Okay, could be it could be that backer out there, whatever scheme happens in there. So if they want that Willie backer up. He's gonna take that Willie and the tackle knows to stay on the end. Yes, sir. Yeah, there's nobody for the tackle to come on off on either. Right. So, <coughs> right. So we, we know that when yeah. he is in motion, what's his aim for the ball snap? When the ball snaps, I coach, you, yeah. he's gonna replace that tackle. This should be yeah. Yeah, just so, on his butt or inside mm -hmm. leg. Yeah, he wants to be exactly. He wants to be right when he sets down on his motion. We square up. Okay, he's going to set down. If, if Tom was the tackle, the left tackle. He's going to set down right there. We call him a settle in the D gap. Okay, about where he would be on a A set. Right. On his inside leg. Exactly. Then his path from the eye mm -hmm. is inside leg of the tackle. Yeah, he's going to chase inside leg of the tackle right. for seal. Okay. Uh, for seal the backside. Yeah, so if we're working out of the eye, okay, we tell him to settle in the B gap, A gap, B gap, all right, because the tackle should be here, and then he wants to replace that tackle. We talk about replace your tackle. You cannot end will seal and stay in the backfield, all right? It's just a nice little ram, ram there. You can't end will seal and stay in the backfield. What happened there? There you go. So we got that motion is tight to the line of scrimmage. It's tight to the line of scrimmage. In fact, you know, Tom was a tackle, that fullback, he's just right off his butt. So now when that tackle leaves, he can replace that tackle. 
and he's stepping up for that animal seal. Okay. There you go. And then the other thing that we do, man, we run, we run 39, and if we if we're just calling, you know, let's say for example, this is 38. That's terrible. I wish I was better there. I'll figure it out sooner or later. But we always have an animal seal on that. Now, if we go say 38 boss, that's a B, okay, we go 38 boss, man, now what we do is we're going to give the defense a total different look, all right, boss tells us now that the fullback is now responsible for the mic back, and we'll go 38 boss, now how do we handle this, okay, we can go zero flip, all right, Flip brings our Z over, or we can go zero zoom, and we'll motion a guy in, okay, for the end we'll seal. If we're going to stay in a normal set, or we can go two out, okay, so we go two out. We could be in, um, say, E personnel, okay. So now we're, we're in a two out. He's still got force here. Okay. And we do this. Now he, with a motion, short motion here, go in, we'll seal. If they walk out, okay, then he knows now he's blocking that. All right, on your balls. A mm -hmm. couple of things. I guess, first of all, on the balls, the backside tackle has no sign of two back set. Basically, he doesn't treat his two back set anymore. He's got that in now. He can't. He's got to take that in, right? Yeah, he's he's got he's to really right he's got to really key into that. But a lot of times, coach on eight and nine, um, you know, we'll we'll book some backside people. To, we'll occasionally book that defensive end. We want him working second level because okay. we're gonna outrun him. Okay. Because if this play doesn't cut back, remember it cuts up. Right. And that quarterback that's going to get back in, he's got to just he's yeah. got to just take a breath out of that guy. Got so we'll hold. stay on the track. Got we'll very hold. seldom tell our offensive line unless we go in the inside zone. We'll call a 36 man. Okay, man blocking now means that the fullback has the Wanda linebacker and everybody okay to our weak side can seal. All right, so they straight seal. So yeah, we're very seldom. Are, are we, you know, blocking that defensive end just straight up man blocking? Because we'll still stay on our track, okay, and work from there. It, uh, it it doesn't bother us because you get back to the objectives there. That quarterback has to hold that defensive end, and then what we tell our quarterback, I ask him in every game, you know, how's your boot look? How's your boot look? How's quarterback heat pass looking? Coach, I don't, I don't know. What? What do you mean you don't know? Because yeah, you got to be out there looking at it. He's got to hold that hat and a half. So we can we can often do that. Okay, and our quarterbacks are good at that. You drop that three seven look. Yeah, I'm gonna go any front you guys want. Okay. What technique here you want on the right guard? Three. Okay. All right. What else you want? Seven out there. Okay. All right and. You know, safety. you want a safety up here? Okay. All right. Backer where? Right here. Twenty. Okay. I'll call him Sam. Is that where you want? Right. Okay. Well, if you got a three here, then you're probably gonna have a one here. Right. Okay. Good. And then your end here, or whomever you're calling it. All right. So, where do you want your mic now? Okay. Stack. He's like thirty call. Okay. Thirty. Right there. Well, no, he's weak B. Weak B. Oh, okay. Like okay. a three technique. Yeah. All right. Split. Okay. So that's. Haha, <laughs> you dummy. <laughs> Better put your eraser back. So he's over here. All right. Okay. Yeah, you just guys help me out with, with your nomenclature and we'll. Okay. What do you have outside here? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, okay. So. I got another. Probably coming, but. We can. Some place. Uh, well, we don't think you got there. So we got a free safety here. Okay. And then corner. All right. They will put me in the black this game. Right. Okay. Okay. If we're if we're running this right now. And what a place. Okay. Safety probably over the tight end. 
Okay. And then you've got so another safety. You got another safety set in here. Right. Got and a then, corner. And then a corner on your flank. Okay. Backed off probably. Okay. All right. Okay. The way the way that we would do that. All right. This is how we would determine this front. Okay. All right. We would. In <laughs> we include him as Sam. Oops. Okay. This would be your mic. Okay. That's your mic. All right. This is Wanda. That's your free safety. So you got corner, Sam, strong safety, free safety, corner, Sam, Mike, and Wanda. Okay? So it's just going off of what you guys see, but that, that's you know how we would determine that. Right there, that to us is a uh, that's basically an overstat cowboy. Strong safety tough. Okay. This guy starts sneaking into the box, we're gonna refer to that as strong safety tough. Okay. Now what coverage is you guys seeing out of that? You get one free here, man no, free. Oh yeah, man and free. Okay. Maybe. You get some three. Yeah, more okay. three than man. Probably. All right. So you're seeing more three. All right. Well, that that's good because he's got that deep third now in the three. So we're we're good there. So here's what we'll do here. Okay. Where's the read? It's that, that, yeah, it's that DN. Okay. It's that DN. So. What we'll do right there, it goes back to the same rules. Okay, it's a seven technique, right? You set an inside technique on a seven. So, yeah. Right, so now we just taught those same things. We talked about the guard, you know, working on the slug. Now what we come with, man, this is beautiful. It's starting to get goosebumps. Okay, this is now a triple. Let's tackle tight in. Yes, sir. And if I ever learned to ride on this damn thing, pardon me, excuse me. Okay, but that's a triple. And so same techniques that we talked about. I got the outside half of the cylinder. So we don't take any bones about it. Okay? Once well, that's the beauty of our, our individual period. Once I teach a slug, I ought to be able to move a guard out there if he's capable of playing tackle and he ought to know everything there is to know about a triple. Okay? And it's the same thing with the center. Once I teach a stick or a gap, because those are our inside zone calls, all right or actually when I say inside eight gap calls, all right, for our wide zone, he ought to be able to go out to a guard and work a slug. Okay, so it's a it's a really good thing in terms of technique and I'm so big on technique it's not even funny. So now we triple that. Okay? So I know as a tight end, I've got the outside half of that cylinder. And that's what I'm working for. I'm working for that stretch. I want to stretch that seven. So I'm here, okay, and I'm here. And that's my tight end. That's his angle of departure. That's his demeanor. Now, the key comes here with this tackle on his triple. And we tell, we tell that tight end the same thing we called our tackle. All right? If that hand stretches with you, okay, we want to declare that read right there. If he doesn't stretch with you, all right, work him upfield, and you should have inside help with your tackle. Tell me you, you're the tight end. I'm okay. the Okay. All right. I'm here, coach. And then right here, and I'm taking that inside half of that cylinder. You know, well, if you're the seven technique, I'm right here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Same thing as before the tackle. Yeah. He's not going. If he's trying to stalemate right there. The tackle's gonna come across like he had to guard. I'm, I'm not gonna be a tackle, and that seven technique yeah. stays there. And and I do want. You're not gonna hang on him then. I mean, you you gonna mm -hmm. no. make him make a decision. We're right, right. We're gonna blow him up with the guard. Yeah, we're gonna blow him up with the guard because we teach the guard now. Okay, it's a triple. I've got to get over there. I've got the inside half, okay? So he's setting in the seven. Go ahead and stand up, Coach. And I don't know if this blocks your camera view. I guess we can go like this. We're, we're smart around here. SMRT, okay? So now I'm a guard. He's setting in there on the seven technique. What we teach the guard to do, he's got to take that nice step here, gain some width, lose a little bit of ground. you got to lose some ground to gain some ground, okay? And I don't mind that. I just never want to see that step do what to their shoulders. Uh, Turn them right here. Right. So I'm here. Okay, I'm right here. And then my second step, I specifically tell them this. I want to see that second step. Never ever scissor. And I want to shoot it to his crotch. So boom. I get in here and I'm tight tuck. Okay? If I can overtake him, fine. But if he stretches, what do I do? It's that thing I told you earlier with the guard. 
three steps, eyeball the hip, okay, the hip disappears, declare any portion of that inside cylinder you can as you're working on your angle of departure. So if there's anything left there to declare, boom, he's declaring it as he climbs the linebacker low. If it stays there, excuse me, that was a good sausage sandwich. If it stays there, boom, I'm working it here. Okay, and I'm gonna try to declare it once again. I'm either gonna get that guy hooked or I'm gonna declare him outside. And that's where we got that old Alex Gibbs deal and we work on it every day. Inside hand is tucked, okay, we bolster our hands and we're always push pulling. Okay? So that's that's our read and it comes off of the base with the triple. Now what we'll do here, okay, we work that triple scheme there. Whoops. So we use the dry erase boards. And he will then work here to Sam. We declare the read here. Okay. Alright. And in this case, we got we got a few we got a few problems here. We're gonna have a hard time getting to that mic backer. Okay, we're running regular eight eight steam here, but again, he can wash it by. But we're gonna gap call this. Okay, we never nudge eight and nine. Now a nudge, I was explaining to Tom at four o'clock this morning. Just easy. Don't look just easy. Okay, but I was explaining to Tom yesterday. We we will nudge six and seven. We'll help that backside one technique because that's a hard scoop overtake cutoff block. So we'll nudge, and what our, our center would do on the nudge on six and seven is he just stings that one technique, and then he outproofs to the mic back to our second level. Okay, but here we call it what wide zone strong. We never ever nudge, so this is a gap. Okay, this is a gap. So these two, the center it has now, and you were raising this question quite often, Tom, yesterday. That center's trying to overtake that three. And we're trying to take our guard now up to that mic backer. Same thing technique you have in your slow. Yeah, that's the triple. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't uh, change. This is uh, doesn't change. What do you call this? Your your center guard. This is gap. Yeah. That's gap. Okay. Yeah, this is a gap block. Okay, so this would be gap. Okay, so there's your gap block. That's between your center and guard. Okay, so we gap that. And then he is working on an angle departure to Mike. And if we don't get the mic cut off, we're all right with that because hopefully we've declared to read, okay, and we'll wash Mike out. We're just washing by the hole, okay? So there we are, okay? We're coming off. Mike Backer is escaping. He's over top. We're just washing. We just keep running. Okay? Well, and again, then boom, we're cutting back. Now, in this front, you guys bring up a really good point. We are specifically going to tell our running back here, okay, there's your primary read. Now, your secondary read became a little bit more involved here. And if we want, we, we get a good stretch on that three, okay, all right, we get a good stretch on that three, boom, he's going to cut underneath that three technique. What do you call your, uh, is it a force call? Say you want to take your Z right there, and you want to bring him inside, motion him back mm -hmm. in, and, and back out right there. Put him on the force. Mm -hmm. That now would you? Yeah. You do that. You can do that. What's that going to do to your? Now you let your tight end hang a little bit longer. We you coach on that with yeah. those two guys. Good the triple. Good question, coach. You guys are you're right on to him, baby. Okay, say we do that. All right. Which you know we have some other schemes too here. We we could double this. We might call a double here, but it's really, what it is, it's a slower triple. Okay, we double, because we'll get some gaming out here. All right, so we call a double, and that's again between the tackle and tight end, they just double the end out to Sam. All right, but it's the same kind of scheme. Is a double only that gap, or is that yeah. just a, I mean, yeah, it's just a term. Actual call. Yeah, yeah, it's just an actual call, you know, that we use for those some of those fronts like but that. But the tight end doesn't come off the fast. Exactly. It's a slow triple, okay? A slow triple. A double is a slow triple because we see this. This is what our defense does to us. They did this all spring. They had Sam in a two by two. Okay, and we were tripling and we were getting hurt on some things. So I just said, hey, we're going to double that out. Okay, and now I'll let it unfold in front of you. You know, declare your read, get that read. If Sam goes outside, then boom, you're off. If Sam goes inside, all right, we should have declared that, got him, 
and now he comes off the sand. So it's just, you know, we just double that guy up. What's your good movement? Coach, that, that double right there a little bit as far as, mm -hmm. are there eyes, tight end's eyes on the sandbacker right there? Is he waiting for him? or? We, we tell him this very specifically, you do not come off until you can see both numbers of that sandbacker. Okay, so if I'm working out there, I'm working, I got to get my movement on that end, and now that Sam comes over, I can see both of his numbers, I can now come off. Tell me the okay. difference. Is there a difference from what you've shown while I go seven? I'm the, mm -hmm. I'm the seven right now. Okay. You're the tight end. Okay. Right here. Okay. Now they've got the same backer stacked right here. Now, mm -hmm. you on, on a double, you're not going to take that same width step that you were taking earlier? Right. It's, it's, we, we tighten down that, that departure a little bit. We tighten it down on the double call. We're not, we're not going to be, you know. What are you gonna do now? We're gonna, we're gonna be a little bit tighter. And the two of us working in, I'm working your outside cylinder as a tight end. Yes. He's working your inside cylinder as a tight end. But we're a little tighter on it, okay? You could we're split in at all, or uh, we don't mess much with the yeah. split, Kevin. No, it's just, uh, it's just the footwork and angle departure. We just tighten it down a little bit. Okay. How far are you? And I missed it earlier. You probably said it, but I, I know you talked about splits. Mm -hmm. uh, did you say last night that? Uh, or was that Alex Gibbs? Somebody talking about your, your your guards are on the shoelaces of your center, or what's your depth yeah, on yeah. the ball? We we uh, I like Jim McNally's theory. We use on the ball, okay. We use normal alignment. And we use off the ball. All right. When we're running wide zone, I'm basically I want normal alignment. So what we do now is we come up. The center sets himself, okay. Then the guard sets, and he wants his hat, all right, to break to break the base of the numbers. Okay, so that's our normal alignment. But we get a team that's that's stunting a lot and doing a lot of the Texas, you know, and Wex and, and moving it around like that, we'll use off the ball alignment. Okay? So now off the ball alignment puts the, the line in a position to where they're damn near called into the backfield. Okay? And we use that a lot. For example, just to give you a little bit better example, if we're running counter, okay the side that we're running counter to, and we're not a big counter team, but we're pretty successful at it, we are going to use on the ball, okay? Because now, you know, you got your doubles and your deuces and your training back to linebacker and stuff. And on this side, Kevin, we use off the ball because we're pulling a guard, okay? And he's got the hinge block. So, uh, you know, it raises a good question. I don't really get much involved in, in telling our guys on eight and nine, you've got to use on the ball or off the ball. I want you in your normal alignment. So we come out there, center sets himself, and the guard, he's going to set himself 22 inches, and the top of his hat should be breaking the plane of his back, you know, his bottom number. And then the tackle should align, you know, in accordance to that. Right. Okay? But here, this this would be a good way, and I'm just going to go, no, I don't want to go next page, okay, because I have to draw it all up again. But let's, let's do this, okay, and we bring motion in like that, which you guys bring up a good point. Okay, let's say you wanted to do that in your scheme of things. <laughs> okay, there's your Sam. All right, let's say you motion him, you treat him as forces, which is a good idea. I'm glad you guys are thinking like that. Now what do we do? This really helps us out now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go next page. <laughs> Bring your country boys to the big city. You know, I, I, I love the high-tech stuff. I'm just so used to working off the dry erase board. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I hear you. No, I, give me some shit. I need it. Okay. He gets mad when we put the dry erase marker on that $15,000 yeah. board. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, that would try to send you to Tizzy. All right, so here's what you guys are bringing up, your concept of controlling that, right? Y'all call that something? Y I mean, yeah, we, we go uh, plank or short. We go flank or short. Okay, we used to, what we used to do. Is that just your motion or is that just our call? motion? It's just is our there motion. any call that says, tells the tight end basically, hey, we're going to take care of force? Yeah. Don't worry about it? Yeah. We used to be really, really strict on that. And anytime we identified a force guy, it'd become a boss. So we'd be running 38 boss. Okay, well, boss meant that the fullback was involved on the, on the force guy. Okay? Then if we wanted to get our flanker involved on the force guy, we called Zeus, 38 Zeus, okay? So now, 38 Zeus, we'd run, uh, let's say, zero a week, F short, 38 Zeus. That would have been our old norm, uh, nomenclature of the old days, mm -hmm. all right? 
So we call that zero week, Z short or F short, we call it. Now we go F short and we go 38 Zeus. We don't do that anymore. Okay, we don't identify the boss or the Zeus as much as we used to because we know our whiteouts now are responsible for first force. So by game plan, you guys here in the war room and you're working, you're watching your, your arch rival and you say for this week, our flanker, okay, is going to be involved blocking this guy on force. Okay, we know that. And that speaks to our alignment now. Okay, Kevin, that speaks to our alignment. So we know that he's got first force. He's in a position where, you know, the back's going to have to beat him. The running back's going to have to beat him. So we're not going to worry about that. He's in a cover three look. Okay. <coughs> he's in the middle. Safety's in the middle of the field. So now what do we do? This really helps us out. That's a good concept you guys bring up. Okay, now we can triple to Mike. Okay, so there's our three technique. We're still going to gap that. All right, working hard there. Okay, and then backside here we got the one. Like I said, we never nudge it. Okay, never nudge that. We still have our annual seal. We're still working gap here, but now we gap back to Wanda. So we gap back now to Wanda. Okay, and that, guys, if you can do that, that's a great concept because what it really is <coughs> to do, I still get a good read here, all right? And we're looking at by front, okay? We'll declare that out, but now we're gapping back to the mic factor. We've got force handled here. He's okay. a little solid up front, a little more of those double teams. It does, there. Coach. And that's what you were talking about earlier when you got up here. You know, it, it changes our footwork just slightly. Just slightly. We're, we're a little bit stronger on it. Okay? We're a little bit stronger on that. Now, here here lies the hard part. Okay? If we just, we've got to get really good at working this here. Okay? On the cutoff. And I work it every day. And probably want to speak a little bit about that one technique cutoff as a left guard. All right? They, they cannot step here. They got to always be over top of them. They got to take that same step, widen, and they got to cross over. Not scissor, but cross over and then stair step up. And we're pretty good. And I don't have the most athletic left guard. And we're pretty good at reaching some one techniques. And we've got a one technique, I think, is as good as any one technique in the league at UNC. You know, I'm watching him and comparing him to Florida Atlantic. And, and Montana State will play Montana this year, and I'll tell you what, our one technique is as good a one technique guy I've seen, and our guard's pretty good at shutting that one off. Okay, now you bring up another good point here, we're still running the wide zone, declaring all of our reads, okay, that track has to remain the same. Now this tackle knows, he still has that end will seal, and we're not, we're not worried about that DN now, because this guy has a better, all right, you got a better, better angle pursuit to the ball carrier. So we ask our tackle now, work hard here, as if you're going to overtake the one, try to get to that one in the backer, but you're looking for free safety, or that safety that's up in the force. Okay, and again, you know, one of the things that we need to just remind ourselves of, and this happens very typically, we're not talking anything here yet. <laughs> okay, he's got to really what? He's got to really boot out of there. So that's the thing you always want to go back to in terms of those objectives and philosophy of this is that quarterback, he has to really hold that hat in a hat. So you always want to see that boot relationship back there. Okay? But that that is a good concept, you guys. Well, you what, about, what about Zeus and Moss? Mm -hmm. And then, I don't okay. know, run the boss right there. Turn yeah, you, you, could, you could do that, Coach. And that's just another way of doing it. And we... We'll throw that boss in there. Okay. Yeah, like goes to the line. Yeah, and let, you want to do that? You want to go with yeah. the little boss look now? Because see, that, that would be Zeus, and that's fine. You just need to be on the same page as the coaching staff with everybody involved in the running game. If that's truly what you're going to do, then as an offensive line coach, I know, okay, force is handled here, and now I'm able to triple back inside. Okay. You, you said, are you saying doing both? Now he's going to want to go boss. Cause are you just Zeus. saying boss? You're not saying both of them, are you, Tim? I'm talking about fullback on the back, and mm -hmm. Z's got force. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a major league double team on the end, okay. and then the gap can be real strong back to one. Okay, all right. 
kind of wasty guy there. I mean, you. Or, but you want to see that single front, right? We got all states seven technique right now. We take care of unfit. I'm just, you know, just talking. Yeah, yeah I, I, we're going to get a double. We're going to get it. That, that triple we might now you got a double team, really, now, huh? That's what you're trying to get? Yeah. yeah I like it. I mean, I okay. love the idea. Now, you still, you you want to, what do you want to do with Z? Yeah, Z. You're going to take him? Okay, so he's a he's next level guy. Well, well, I don't know about okay, that. we're gonna go yeah. here still. Okay, all right. So we're still there. All right, now if you go and you want to run boss. Yeah. Okay. We we normally probably wouldn't do this. Okay. Okay. We we would not combine the two. All right. Okay. But if you did, coach, you know, we just bring up a point here. So we're talking about if we were to do it. Always draw those guys a little deep. Okay. Now, it, it really, what you were saying, it still allows you, okay, you get that. Now, I'm gapping all the way back to Wanda, okay? I'm gapping all the way back to Wanda because you call it Boss, and Boss to us puts our fullback on that mic backer. Okay, I thought Boss let that play by tackle lock longer on the set. I thought it would be a longer double. It would be. It would be. I mean, Coach, he's got a day and a half to get to Wanda mm -hmm. if we run this scheme. Okay. okay, if we ran Boss, Coach, if we were running Boss, what we would get here, this would be a slow turnout. Okay. What so is your, you yeah. don't wind up with two guys basically on that Willie background, yeah. show, aren't you? And, and that's what we don't want to do. Your right. A, your right. backside A block right there is going exactly. to wind up double exactly. that Willie. Yeah. You're all looking for the Willie backer. Yeah, and we don't, we don't want that. So that's what I was saying. We won't run we won't run that type of a combination okay. okay okay because yeah you you i mean you've got god that could be strong you could really power that out and everything but now he's doubling back to wanda and you're still trying to what what about that. so what did you what did you call let's say we want to release our tight end right now let's say that seven technique mm -hmm. you know they're really coming up at seven and yeah. even if he's a good one they're saying hey to let that tight end release. Right. You get your hands on him and he'll wide him. So we want to we want to take that good seven. We want to wide him so that tackle can really just mm -hmm. just take him on out and stretch him. Mm -hmm. What do you call if you want that tight end to release on the force right now? Test. 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 Tight end to strong safety. Okay. And here's here's the front. And if you want, I can show an example of that. You want to see a front? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, I like. I'm, I'm here for that front right, right there. Yeah. I mean, okay. I, I like it in that one, I may be just thinking wrong because, you know, no. seven techniques a lot of times are taught to get your hands on it, so oh, when yeah. you release that tight end outside, right. it widens that, it widens that seven right now and, mm -hmm. and gets you moving that way already. You'll we'll see, like an eight technique sometimes, that strong safety give you a wide line scrimmage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pin back cover. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he may be so tight that it's hard to get that flank or anybody else up in there. So he could be up there even tighter. I'm talking about Sam, he's on the last scrimmage. Yeah, he should be yeah, right here. Okay, so you got your Sam. Yeah, you don't stop that sprint out lot. Yeah, he's coming. Sam. The okay. Sam's in like an A technique. Kind of okay, okay, so there's an A technique and he's coming, mm -hmm. and you still have the Which same. Way on the free state. He's he's back. Back. Okay, he's back. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I don't have to contend with this guy. Yellow back right side. side. Okay. We've been split back a problem. Okay. All right, now where do you have a three tech here? Three. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got your three there, and obviously probably here, huh? Right. Okay. All right, Sam, and you said your safety's back? All right. Okay. Your backer is? Backer is B-gap? Yeah. Okay, there's that. That'd be our Sam Mike, what we call. We get Wanda there, and we get three safety right there in the box. Okay. All right. So what we're doing there, and you guys bring up a really good point. Hey, um, my tackle now has to clear that read, and my tight end is going to stretch that Sam. There's no bones about it. I do not want that tight end messing with that DN because we're running wide zone. Okay, again we got the end will seal here. All right, he's reaching that, trying to get the one, but he's actually going to cut off that free safety. Okay, they're going to walk that free safety in the box. Okay, we're here. You're sitting probably with a corner, maybe head up alignment outside funneling into the safety. Okay, he's gonna go cut that. This wide out, okay, he'll try to work that free safety. He may not get there, but that's the angle we want coach to see him on. Okay, he's gonna try to get that free safety. If he can't, he just goes downfield. 
Okay, or he looks for the corner, but he's always working in that cut wall position. So here, man, the point that I bring up is I'm not going to double with that with that tackle. I'm going to take this Sam and stretch him, okay? Because right now with this setting in a seven, where do we expect the ball to break? We're going to cut behind that three. So, so you have two bases and a gap on it? Yeah. This would, be, oh. this would be man, all right? Okay, this will be man here. This will be gap here, okay? So we'll base this, base this, and now we'll, we'll gap this in a three, okay? Because we don't, we don't feel, all right, this is not going to involve a, a slug block here because that guard is responsible for that three technique. So we're going to stretch that three. So we're going to try to get that three stretched and we're going to do what with that defensive end? Man, when I get a seven technique as a tackle, I start to get really excited. Okay, I tell my guys I get a little bit of a woody here. Okay, because man, that's when I use that perfect technique. I got that inside touch. If he stretches, I declare him. We've got the same stretch. Hmm? What, what's your aim point again now with a seven? With a seven? Okay, if I'm setting on a seven, coach, go ahead and stand up. I'm that, I'm that right tackle, okay, or, or whatever the case may be if we're in the left formation. Left tackle. Widen a little bit, Eric. Okay, he uh, widens a little yeah. bit. All right. Our first step is here. I'm going to lose a little ground to gain ground. Okay, and now what I'm doing is my second step, no scissor. I'm bringing it right up to the crotch, and my hat is going where? Outside. So I'm going to the same, then, just yep. a little bit as a five. You just work yep. out. You just get more width. Get right more there, width right now. Ground to get to that. Yep. Lose a little bit of ground back. to get there, and then boom, declare. You basically put him in that five. Yeah. Again, is all you're doing. That's right, coach. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't we want a boss? Yes. Okay. Now, do you want to run boss here? Yes. We we could we could do that. We could run boss. All right. But well, how are we going to take care of the mic without it? Mic unlocked. It's not. Huh? No. It's going to be a wash. I mean, just to go with top with other. But here's what we see so much. I mean, let him run out there. We want him to run out there because we're going to get. Yeah, we're going to get good stretch here. Right. We're going to get a good, good declared here, and men, we are really going to. To handle this secondary read now, and we're cutting right there. Level, I'm going to be overtaking a second level guy. Here's what I teach my right tackle. I'm, I'm basically uncovered. I got a seven technique set on me. Okay, I'm going to use a crossover set. So I'm going to go get that mic line back. Now, if I was scooping somebody, I'd be here. I mean, I'd be here. But I'm uncovered, right? I'm going to a second level. Okay, we skinny our stance down just a little bit. I'm going to snap the ball, we cross over, and we're going, and it provides a beautiful angle. The reason we do that, and I teach uncovered, covered, because I'm not involved in scooping somebody on the line of scrimmage. If I am, and I do this, I'm where? I'm in the backfield, but now I'm definitely, with this, I'm working to a Mike linebacker. I've got nothing to do with that one technique. So now I teach that crossover. We each cross it over, but we still try not to ever scissor. Okay, this is bad news, Coach. That's bad news. Yeah. You're not going anywhere. Right. You know that. You're a technician. I mean, this right here, this is good. But we release it to go right now. Okay. So we're really, we're really careful with that. If I've got a true release at second level, I'm gonna go ahead and cross over right now. If I'm scooping a guy, it's back to that we talked about uh, keeping your shoulders square. But here, in this case, I don't care if I see those, see those, you know, shoulders turning. I don't care if I see it. In fact, I look for that. So, what does that involve, guys? It involves that right there. It involves our force call. All right. So now we run that. There's that imaginary tight end out there. Crack the ass. Boom! There's his track. And. Again, we're, we're, we're reading that, that end. If that end goes out, he's cutting up. If that end goes inside, he stays on his track. Both of them the upside end. And now your fullback has the same reads. He looks at that primary read. And that's so critical. Where we found that we were having some troubles in our wide zone, wasn't so much here, it was here. And that fullback has to be down an individual period on the strip every day working that. You know, we just went out and bought one of the strips, you know, end tackle, guard, all that. 
and then our coach, Keith Grable, running backs coach, he's over there working with the linebackers and defensive ends, and we bring the scout team guys over, and we start doing all that gaming, and Keith works a 15-minute period. Well, actually, our, our individual period is more like 45 minutes, but about 10 to 15 minutes of that on a particular day will be sent, or spent, excuse me, on this very read. So our fullback gets really good at reading that. Okay. All right. So that that's what we did there against our defense, and it worked out, you know, quite well. We had a little bit of difficulty sometimes with the backside one technique. Okay. And again, here we would just don't want to kick a cook over. All right. He's reaching, and what's this guy doing? He's pulling down in there and slicing. The backside one. Are you going to close your split a little bit with the ball no. center? Or you no. No. They'd like to, but I don't let them. Don't let them because every now and then they'll do that. What I will allow them to do, Eric, is I'll allow them to use on the ball. Okay, but I want their splits to stay the same. But I'll go ahead and have them crowd that ball. Okay, instead of working, you know, normal alignment, I'll say, okay, we're we're doing this. We're going to run some weak side zone. We're getting a lot of one technique on that back side, the strong side there. Go ahead and use on the ball alignment. Now I've got a better angle to him, a little bit quicker departure. Okay, as opposed to being normal line. Never want him off the ball because you're going to get, get eaten up with that. But uh, McNally is really big and we used it to help our running game out a lot and also pass protection. We're big. We use adjustments on the ball, off the ball, normal alignment. For example, in the 300 game, we're running 360. Guess where our alignment is? It's on the ball. Yeah, we're on the ball. We're on as tight as we can get. We're running 82 protection. Uh, directional calls to the fullback, like that pattern I showed you, 82, Texas, the dual read is to the guard, okay, because he carries a two-hole number. Well, we're going to use off the ball alignment. It's basically the team that stunts a lot. So we use off the ball and spies you sometimes. So we do incorporate that into the running game, but I don't sit there and, you know, unless we're running counter, I'm not up there checking it every damn time, you know, say, hey, you need to be off the ball and on the ball. Okay, but that's what we do there, and then, um, Here's, here's something else we did. This was the adjustment that uh, hurt him in that front. Okay, we went flip. Anytime we're in flip, this is always a six yard split. Okay, he's four yards from the, from the Z. Okay, if we were in zoom, it would just be the opposite. Now X moves in and Z is off the ball. That's what we call zoom. This is flip. It speaks to him. You're flipping over. We go zoom. He, he doesn't move other than he knows now, okay, that he's inside and the flanker's off. And we'll use that for flanker drive. We'll motion him in or in our flanker drive routes and stuff off the line. <coughs> so here we're just in zero flip, and here's what the defense was doing. Okay, they kept their front intact. Went like so. And most of the time he was in a two-by-two block. Two Right, and they were big on keeping this look here. Well, it's always a gap, always a gap. And guess what? We were running wide zone, strong, and guess who we weren't getting to? Couldn't get to the one. That guy, damn good linebacker here, number four, Thomas Smith out of uh, Denver, Colorado, and that circle was flying, we'd never get him cut off. You back that guard one again? You weren't, you, you no, back that? No, coach, he was flying right now, we couldn't get him. We could not get him. But we, we weren't even coming close. He was coming back. A-gap, backside A-gap? Nope. He was in over the A-gap coming over top, right? And we could not get him cut off, and we were running the strong side zone. All right. And he was making the tackle. On, on that right there, let's mm -hmm. say the flying right there, you gonna chop that three? The backside uh, three? The backside three? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is He's the same thing. Top when you have a, a pretty good little cutback alley right there on your... Yeah, we thought we would. Well, I had to stop it, I guess. Yeah. It, we, what, what was happening is... We, we were... He, he is such a good linebacker, and he flows, he flows so hard. He was... Uh, Playing it both. Yeah. He, he's pretty damn good. And it, it was hurting us. I mean, it really was. So... I mean, we just decided to go flip, all right, because their adjustment, when we went flip, that is a strong reduction of that wall in the backer. 
I mean, he's definitely a gap there, right? And he was causing some havoc. Every now and then, Coach, ask, answer your question, yeah, we had a pretty good cut up. You know, we gained, you know, five or six yards. But they put that Wanda up there, Mike, okay, and then they bring the strong safety late, right up into the box. And they brought their free safety right here, and this was their corner. Okay, so what we decided to do out of flip is we just mash blocked it. Okay, and now we were able to get to that Wanda. We were definitely getting to that Wanda because we mash blocked it. Okay, all right, and our fullback was now right here. He was to the Wanda, we were getting him shut off all the time. So we went weak side, wide zone. So we blocked it that way. What was your backside guard doing that? Oh, you going? I got something in my eye. Here's what, here's what we did. Here's what we did with that. Okay. We went ahead and we stretched this. And we slow gapped that. Okay. And then sometimes, you know, there's some things you change up with your center. Yeah, but so now he's also got to watch for. The, the he's always fullback never goes through a gap, right? Yeah, he's always he's always he's got to go through that a, right? Yeah, yeah. He just slowed it down. And we were still overtaking there. Cut. Okay. The no. Fullback never goes a gap. Right. Never goes a gap. But that helped us out a lot. Let me ask you this. This is a question I had. Maybe they never go a gap. I heard you say that, but. No. Let's say we're in wide zone there. Well, the first read, the first part, the primary read, primary read, wide. The end. Next read, three is running wide. Mm -hmm. We're cutting. We're and cutting we're the ball's going to go back underneath yep. the three, exactly. even though it's not. A, although the, that A gap stretched, mm -hmm. fullback, if that, if that three stretched before the fullback hit the line of scrimmage, he's going to go under the three looking for Willie. Yep. Okay. Yep. But he never goes. He never goes. I know he's not running the A, yeah. but. Right. And then see what we did here with this still being a, you know, this was still a three, and they were one backside here yet. We, we just kept with our normal blocking. I'm just telling you, these are some things we talked to the line about because now we're in flip, okay, and they're free safety. We know they're matching it. So it speaks to the line a little bit. Wanda State A gap. We know that that fullback now, okay, was going to be working that. And we would still... I told the offensive line, well, let's work on staying with our continuity, and we'll still work our gap, okay? But now we know that this is a strong gap back to Mike, okay? And we were still working here. They brought that strong safety into the box. We were still releasing this here, okay? If you couldn't get to Mike, who did you get to? Sam, this guy was always taking and controlling that DN, and who got flagged? Because what should happen? Is that half a half? Okay, a half and a half. So that's what we're doing there. It worked out well. So we stayed with the continuity of it because of the young offensive line. What I would eventually work to, and I was able to do this last year. All right, we uh, we might change the center up a little bit, and then just now tell him, you know, to slow his gap way down because he's gapping back to Mike because of the force call. But we're pretty young right now. We graduated four of our starting five in the old line, and I'm not so apt to run into that next level of, uh, of theory with this offensive line. So we stayed with our continuity. We kept our schematics just the way we wanted them, and we kept that with intact. Our schematics stayed the same, and we gap called this. But we just told them that now, hey, you're gapping back to a backside backer. Okay. Whereas before, or last year, I might have told Nate LaRue, you're going to step there, okay, but paw that one technique off and then work up the line. But here, this spring, Kevin and the rest of you guys, we're, we're sticking with our total schematics of how we block it based upon our rules. So that's what we went there. But this hurt our defense, bottom line. We ran, we were very successful, and I brought our screen, our uh, scrimmage tape for you. You all want to look at it. I brought my uh, call sheet so you can look at all the so that's that's what we did there, and we flagged this guy because that's he belongs to the quarterback. That's his. Okay. And then 
we uh, we heard him with some boot. And we got, you know, getting this overplay now. He comes down, okay, he runs his slam drag. Boom, he's out, okay. All right, and we did quarterback. He's got the deep run back at three. Okay, and then we have your deep over, and our X is running. He's got the middle over, he's got the deep over. Okay, so we heard him with some quarterback stuff, good quarterback team stuff. And that all ties into the zone stuff. But that, that's what we did. We were very successful, and that goes back to what you guys were talking about earlier. You know, control your edge determined because we had this guy up here and we had that guy coming. That was that front that concerned me that you guys had me draw up. And you know, like I told you, you can handle that with boss and truly treat it as a boss and your fullbacks on him. That keeps your it keeps your rules intact. Keeps your rules intact and you're able to do that stuff. Okay. Alright. Um, let's just real quick I want to look through here. Uh, I just want to make sure we cover everything. Because uh, I like to, the old teacher in me, I just like to be very thorough and answer all the questions you have. Any questions on the tailback objectives? Okay, we looked at that, just the track. Okay, uh, the next page, I don't know, yours might be in a different order than mine, but I've got the wide receiver objective. And the thing that we harp with the wide receiver is we just understand their, import their importance and in this scheme of things, it's blocking the eighth and ninth half. So it's that force guy that we often talk about. And then we, we talked about already very clearly about protecting the edge with motion. We do that with our receiver, okay, with our Z or we do it with our fullback. Because we'll, we'll run a lot of this, guys, over here. Okay, I know I'm extremely right hand, but we draw it up to the left too. Like so. Okay. Now, if we're running, running boss, all right. Well, we might even motion that fullback and head out of here. Okay. We'll come back here, and he has the angle seal. All right. Or we might be in a two out. Okay. Now this is a, a receiver, so your fullback's removed. Okay. And we're in a two out. Now he's got the angle seal to control the edge. So we use we use we're going to control the edge with flanker, okay? Bring the flanker across, or most nine out of ten times we're going to control it with the fullback, okay? With the end will seal. But somebody's always controlling the edge, and that's the thing that's so important. Then obviously it's tied into the passing game. We talked about the quarterback objectives. You know, seating the ball at its deepest point. We talked about his clock. All right. We talked about that the importance of the fake to hold and soften the backside. <laughs> Question. And then we have to we have to identify the fronts, okay? The identification of the fronts, and you'll see there in parentheses we've got force calls and over calls. And that's when you guys you had me draw up that front, I'd immediately tell our quarterback to over that. We're gonna hold them. We're gonna come back weak side. Okay, we often run, you know, we're gonna run away from that strong safety in many cases and also in that front. And I thought you guys were getting very similar to what we call a bear front, okay, where you got eight guys in the box. And we have a whole scheme of things for bear defenses. This is what we call a bear front, okay? Yeah, we're going to run a shotgun five wide to get eight in the box. We've got nine guys in the box. Okay, yeah. but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get this, okay? And you can. We don't see it very often, but we'll get this. Okay, that could be an end if you're in a 30 front or what you guys call a 50 front. Okay, that could be an end. We call that a pinto look. Pinto. And we're going to give a pinto call automatically in the old line, but you know it was very similar to what you guys were building with your front earlier. We get a stretch guy here. Okay, we get Sam here. And we still get a mic factor here, okay? A one is here, and pegs here, and that would be called in our scheme of things as a three-four bear. Okay, three-four bear, and I automatically tell you if I gave you one of those uh, game plans, and I think it was on there. We see a bear. We have bear runs. 
and we are not going to run just any old play into the bear. Now, what would we run into this in the wide scheme of things? We'd run 38 bucks. Okay, we would boss this because now, all right, we're getting what? We get this, okay, all right. Now we're getting this. Stretch that, okay. And our fullback is now up on the mic, and we pinto block the backside, which is what we call a gang full scoop. And he gets booked because we're coming out of here with that. So if we had a bare front, boys. We'd have to turn that into the boss team. Okay? We'd have to do that. With Big Bear, have you heard Big Bear? With the end, strong said you would switch. The big you, Bear? You yeah, got you the got big, the end out there. No, you got the big it. Sam. Okay. <laughs> That's what I heard on, on there. The big blue house. Is that what you yeah. heard? We heard, we heard I, I have it. You know, we, we see, oh, we we see, see a lot of different <laughs> people in there. This, this has been the Mike Bagger against... Um, uh, against, let's see, who was it? It was, uh, it was Cal Davis. This was Mike Backer, and this was the strong safety. Right. Yeah. When they when they replaced him, it was uh, he was still kind of getting mugged, but it was from an eight technique okay. instead of head up. Okay. And I heard the Cowboys call it Big Bear when okay. when, they, like, when Richard Dent mm -hmm. moved yeah. from the from the from that gunner to over the end. Mm -hmm. Now that was Big Bear. That was Big Bear. And so now. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they would change it to a fourth block instead of a right. cross block. Yeah, we, we haven't seen we haven't seen that front. But you know, going back to this, if we see the bare front, we want to be sticklers are running the, the eight hole scheme wide zone. We'll have to boss block that. We we played Minot State one year, mm -hmm. and uh, they ran. Yeah. And you know, and again, it, it creates some problems, and that's why we look at and a lot of our audibles against bear are right here. We're coming with you, okay? And you can see now, all you have for that weak side, you know, we A block back to Mike, all right? We're here and here, and our fullback is now the pay. Okay, so we run a lot of weak side stuff. We'll also run the G lead, okay? We'll G lead into the bear, all right? And if we do that, it's been a hell of a play for us. We can run G lead into it. Okay, you get that bear, what we call a 3 4 bear in this case. Okay, G lead is really like a boss scheme, all right? And fullback is always on the mic backer in G lead, okay? So he's got, you know, he might have to go outside of it, but he's reading this here, okay? He might be able to go there or continue outside. He bases that. Okay, we go G lead here, G to G scheme, he pulls and traps, he blocks down, they gain block the backside. Okay, they pinto block, that's our pinto scheme. We have run 36 G lead against the bear. Okay, and I don't mean, I'm not trying to get off in his own concepts, but we see fronts we're going to make some adjustments to and we prepare for this bear all the time okay so that's something that we looked at and that's what i thought you guys were getting to earlier with your uh, with your front i thought you were seeing some bear front what we call bear okay so that but that's g lead has been very very helpful to us and again we'll run 38 boss but we're going to check a lot of our stuff to the weak side versus that okay so that's quarterback objectives. Uh, in the offensive line, that's, you know, I could talk to Ever with you guys on that. Um, let's just make sure we've covered everything. You know, we're big on, on the fronts. Our, our kids have to learn the fronts. We drop all the different fronts for them. They're tested on it. They're actually written assignments, tests that we give them. So we have to be very familiar with the fronts. And our centers will always call, always identify Mike. Our center has to identify Mike. So it's even middle gap, or it's even, uh, you know, gap left, whatever it might be. So we get some skin fronts too. This is a skin. We see some skin fronts. Now we go skin. It just speaks in our terms of our nomenclature. It speaks to our mic backer. Anytime the mic backer, you know, a true four three look, he's sitting right over the top of the center. Anytime he goes plus is strong, we call it a tom. 
Anytime he goes weak, we call it a skin. Okay? Alright? So now we get our one technique here, our end here, and our wand is outside. That's our skin. Now anytime we see a skin, we always see an exchange front on the strong side. So he's now in a three. Okay, and is in a six. Okay. And then your Sam's sitting inside. And that's what we call it. <coughs> so we look at these fronts, and if we're running, all right, say 38 here, wide zone, our center would call, come up to line scrimmage, you go even, gap, left. And identify the Mike Backer. We always identify zero with the Mike Backer. And we would do what here? Triple. That'd be our triple two. Sam, it's all those things we talked about, okay, with our with our reads. Determine the point of attack, declare the read, bring the ball carrier to you, all those things we talked about there. Alright? And we would gap this being a three. Okay. We never step him backside. We gap back to Mike because we made an even left gap. So even left gap. Let's talk about a, a little bit about technique while we yeah. got that drawn up there. Mm -hmm. On the triple right there, mm -hmm. uh, if the guy's hanging, we're going to stay on the dog, or the, stay, the two guys going to stay on the end. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. Sam runs over the top. Okay? We just call him go. And we'll try to take the, the end back into the sand. You got the sand coming over. Right. Top. Okay. We, we, uh, we're going to pound this this double team. All right, we're going to try to declare that, and that's what we want right. to do right there is declare that read. And if he's hanging in a seven, all right, uh, our tight end will come off late to that sand. Late, he'll come off late to that sand. But we are going to pound Tom. We're going to pound that read because I got I got a what's going to what's going what's going to tell that tight end to come off? Because we're telling him if that guy is hanging there mm -hmm. numbers. When well, he sees both numbers outside. When he sees both numbers and only when he sees both numbers. So if there's cylinder left there to block, okay, we're going to triple that and we're going to block that, block that, block that. Now here comes the Sam. I see both numbers. I'm off. Okay, so now I come off late to the Sam. All right. I was listening earlier. Uh, I was here. Like the man with Steve stuff. He's going to lose his time. No, I'm not. I'm your time. I'm in good shape. And you'll be at home in bed and I'll still be asking them questions. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's you know, that's that's what we do and man, I've got the hope that we, we get a tackle and a tight end on that D N. I got a hope that we can declare that. And if we can't then damn, you know, we we got some problems in the old line. Because we, we do not have too many problems on our triple. We really declare a triple quite well and and then, you know, you raise a good question, how do you determine when to come off? If we were six and seven, all right, I would tell you this. If we're running inside zone, we're always this. Okay, or 90, 10. We're 90 percent on the double team, and we're 10 percent on the linebacker. Level. Oh, inside zone, what you said? Yep. In fact, I work a drill where I'll try to fool my lineman, okay, and I'll just have them double, 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 and I'll scrape that backer. I'll have them run underneath, and if they come off too early, I don't like it. I get extremely upset because our philosophy on the inside zone, okay, both strong and weak, is we're 90-10. All right, we're 90% on the double or 10% on second level because what's going to happen is we're going to get that good pound, and we're going to pound that double. All right, we're going to declare that read even on eight and nine, and man, that's going to create some opportunities. And you get a lot of times what you get is you get a linebacker that has the ball. He's got to run over top, and then here you are. Boom, he's running over top. You got that declared. There's your cut. You're cutting up. So it's a good question, Tom. We really work hard on declaring that read, and then you know we're not quite as as prone to go 90-10 on our wide zone. But I'll tell you what we will do, and I, we've become very good at this, is declaring this read. I will not accept a back coming to me in nine on seven and saying, Coach, I cannot determine what the read is. I'll stop practice and I'll stick my foot so far up their butt 
hit that back is telling me that. You're going to try that now, going with what Tom said right there. And I know you said this earlier, but mm -hmm. that tackle's going to try to pass. If he's trying to hang, that tackle's going to try to pass him off that tackle. Yeah, he's going to try to jack him out fine. He's going to try to get him out there and force that cut back underneath and make that sand back yeah. and come to that tackle right, right. there. Exactly, Coach. And you're going to see this on film. It brings up a, a good point. Ask all the questions you want. If I'm that tackle, okay, and that seven is hanging, all right, that tight end, here's his footwork right here. Okay, now that tackle, here he comes. He's here, all right, because he's now involved with the inside half of that cylinder. And if that cylinder's there, bam, he's forcing that thing outside. He's trying to declare that as hard as he can. And then he'll climb to that sand, okay? All right, so you'll see this on film. We can watch film at any time you want. And I will clearly indicate to you, I, I, I hope, I think we'll see it, where that tackle has declared that DN in this exact scheme, okay? So that's, that's really what we have to do. If you're going to run the wide zone, guys, 8-9 scheme, you have to declare your read. What about a, what about a, a guy that wants to play up, play in that situation, a Sam back that wants to try and run under when he sees that guard, uh, well, in that situation, be the tackle. When the tackle works out yeah. to, the, to the down man, and that Sam starts to go fill it up right now on the yeah. inside gap. This is where I grab my running backs, coach. I ask him what his responsibilities are. That's what he wants to hear. He wants to know when does he get to grab him? <laughs> 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 yeah, he made the gold pin right here. What he part of your strangling? And and we have uh, we have a young buck, you know, as a running backs coach, but he he played at UNC. Keith Grable, um, he, he's really good. And he's taken, he's gone with me to Denver, he's gone to Kansas City Chiefs with me, and, and we've talked inside zone and outside zone. And, and Keith, I wish, like heck, could have brought him out. He's really good. He was a wide out. He's really good in passing game. He's taught me a lot in passing game. And, and in turn, I've shared a lot with him in a running game. And that's when I'll go to answer your question. I'll go to Keith Grable, and I'll say, what is your back doing? Okay, that's, that's creating that that sand would be filling so quick. And then we just look at the path of it. That's what he's got to do, that 75% slow the hole. He's got to he's got to get that sand to stretch. You know, and Tom, you can stunt. You know, you can always have your stunts. This would be, you know, and Sam Cross is what we call, you know, our sex and our wexes. And you can always have that. And that's when, you know, I'm not I'm not real big. I don't spend a lot of time on the stunts because you know, kids kids get in the idea that, okay, wow, they're stunting and, you know, we really got to be careful here. And it, it reduces some of their aggressiveness. And I don't like that. So I really just teach techniques and stuff. But let's say we start getting some of this, okay, and Sam is going, do, do not chase, do not turn back in, do not chase the stunt. Okay, and on six and seven, it's a little bit different. But... Not extremely different, but if that end goes inside, then this tackle knows or this tight end knows what. He's working his angle departure to Sam. Okay? If it's the opposite of that, okay, if we go the other way, okay, we just very carefully, we've got that, we've got that, it goes back to what I said earlier, and, and I'm glad we're back on this, on that tackle, right? And I'm going to declare that read. And what's my aiming point? I'm looking for one thing. Okay. One thing only. Hip. Hip. And man, it's helped us out tremendously. I mean, if I'm that, I'm looking. I'm looking at that hip. I'm that right tackle. And I'm spying that hip. If that hip goes away, one, two, three, can I declare? Yeah, there's, there, there's still some cylinder. I'll declare it. But as I'm looking, all right, I'm feeling here. I'm feeling this sand. If that hip flies out, there's no way I'm going to, you know, a hip disappears immediately, I immediately climb the sand. So in this case, this would be that scenario. I look here, okay, take that balance step, buy a little bit of time to gain some time and leverage, okay, right there, and I see a hip disappear, I'm now immediately, my, my focus is right back to sand, and I'm climbing on that perfect angle of departure. I do not want to see this guy, you know, Get back in here. I want to see him climb 
you know, square up. But sometimes with that sand that they stun it, you know, I don't work a lot of it, but we read it. It goes outside, boom, look for sand right now. Okay. But I'll go back to Russia in a hurry. No. Inside to go get it. And when, no. I, when I even want to see it, I, I don't want to go square no. it up. No. No. I want to maintain outside leverage. Yes. Yes, I don't want to see this. Right. I want to see, okay, hip goes away, hip goes away, got it, got it, got it, got it. And that's responsibility back, too. Yeah, that's why I got that running back coach. That's, and that's yeah. why I brought up the point that I brought up. I want to know, you know, because so many times I'm watching nine on seven and I see, damn, that Sam is filling right, you know, right away. And with spring ball, and they get so used to what, you know, we, we face our defense every day, you know, so we have to change formations up every now and then and, and put a little wrinkle in it. But so many times, when I saw that Sam film, here's what our running back was doing. He would get right to about here, and he's cutting up. He's not pressing the crack of that tight end's ass. Or he wasn't at what? It was more like 90. He just flying boom right there. That's all I was doing. He wasn't pressing to crack that ass and allowing this to expand. We want to stretch that and then we want to allow that backside to expand. Okay? So that that happens and I look very carefully at the running back. We look at that. So that, it comes back to some good points earlier. You know, we're really big on just watching that hip and declaring that read. We've got to declare that read. Look at that very carefully. Okay. Led 40 on the start field? Yeah, no, no sit down when I threw that marker because you're going to mark right on the field, you know. Yeah. You're going to mark on it. And, uh, yeah, and, and what do I have to do that on? Right here? Yeah, we're going to protect it right there. So the weeds. I don't know if that's going to work. Huh? I'm going to try and find out. If you mess the system up again. I think you got to run that video through the computer and go through it. There you go. Well, I guess Deacus has got a day. Like on a DVD or something, yeah. you were running through. I asked him that yesterday. I think he said, you've got to go through the real player to do it. But from that VCR, you can't really. You know what I'm saying? Oh, really? I wanted to show you one other thing. So this is for projection right now. That I think I'm going to do this. Set this up a little closer right, right here. That's on the film on. stuff and just center it on the video. Right. Try to do it when we get them like this. Yes, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's got to run through that. you got to capture mm -hmm. it and run it through there. Okay. We will uh, we'll give a test call here. Okay, that's a test call. We've got, say, the strong safety in what we call a tough position. So we got an exchange here, basically, a 4-3 exchange, strong safety, tough, 38. Okay, and we don't feel, you guys were talking earlier, about your white out being able to get in there. Okay, well, with his normal split, he's going to try to get in there, but we've looked at game tapes and stuff, and we don't feel he can get in there. All right, so we'll go to a test scheme. All right, we just put him down or he's on the corner, and then here we test. All right, and we tell with that, we're going to test with that because he's the force and fill guy right now, and then we're here and we're gapping here. Okay, and we'll often we'll incorporate this into our boss scheme. Okay, and now he's to that backer, and now we can get back here. So we can we can combine that test scheme with a boss scheme, and it doesn't take you out of running your wide zone. Okay, and then we do that. And I just wanted to show you that because I was looking here at the old line objectives, you know, and, and I I've got in parentheses there, you know, talking about the test scheme. And those are some things that, that we'll look at and we can we can stay on board with the test. Okay? And then again, he's here, we're gapping here, we're gapping back. We involved our boss here. Okay. He's gotta hold that because we are not going to seal this backside. We're gonna still what? Do all that. Okay, so he's gotta hold that. So there's that there's that test scheme when involving in with the boss. All right. If if you if you don't always have to boss it, you can still gap, but it's going to be a what? 
be a cut back be, because this is a wash. Three, yeah. It's a wash. Ain't nobody on, really. Yeah, and you're cutting back behind the three. So you don't have to incorporate boss. You can test it, but I just want to show you the combination. You can go a test scheme with boss if you're worried about some backside overlapping the line. But is that a boss? Is that what you said just said? Yes. You can go. But you're you going to be asking your 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 um, yep your tackling. Well, I mean, no, your guard as soon as you reach it all the way over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now reach it out right there. now. It's just a full wash yeah. up to that. And Changing that's the technique right there. I mean, they're coming off a little faster. Yeah, yeah. They're they're a little bit quicker. Okay, they really want to. You know, we hope that the tackle can handle that in. Because he's so up, he's so far outside there, you know, outside the tackle, he's in a seven technique. We're not going to slug that, okay? We are, we are not going to slug that. There's just no way. All right, so we go back to the gap scheme. We evolve our center, and now our guard. And we say, okay, okay, guys, we're going to gap that. We're going to test release it. Tight ends to strong safety, okay? That tackle is what? <clears throat> he's declaring that right now with his push-pull technique. And then we're going to work a gap, okay, and the guard and tackle are trying to produce the best angle they can to get to that backer. If they can't get to it, they wash him by. You just wash him by, and then, hey, our back is instructed that when he sees this with a test team, where's the ball probably going to hit? It's going to be cut up. Yeah, because this, you're going to get that stretched. So you're going to get that stretched unless this guy is just a total waste. So you can get that stretch. So hey, now you come off your primary read, you better be looking at some secondary read. So we look at that. All right, that secondary read washes by. You've got to press that gap, and he's cutting up. Okay, and we're pretty successful with that. We've been able to do that and not incorporate boss. And then obviously, if you don't, you got your fullback on the angle seal. Okay. So you got that available there. So if I'm sitting there, I'm just strategizing, which you know we've been known to do a little bit. Sure. Here. That Sam Backer is a hard, he's a fast, great, fast flow player. Then uh, we probably want to go back and uh, and no boss. We want to put the back, the fullback backside, cut everything off, and let him run himself out. But if he's a plugger, then we probably want to go sit in there and, and do the ball. And that's the key, coach. Exactly right. You uh, you've got it down. Because we need a little bit of personnel too to win it. I mean, if, if we don't have a, you know, if that's a stud backer sitting in there, just a big big kid, we, depending on who our fullback is, we may not go with the ball. So let a bigger lineman be able to come off, let that tackle come off, and maybe put the fullback on the force. Yeah. On a my personnel match. So you got some options though, because I mean, we might want to go out there and, and you know take the uh, take the test call off. Yeah. Yeah. Take it all. Take it all. inside. Yeah. That's right. Well, triplet, that. triplet to that big back. Yeah. Put a big lineman on. Yeah. It. Now yeah, you can go. Yeah. Put that bigger lineman on. It. Right. Plus, I think mean, right. put that fullback outside. Sometimes you may really get that backer screaming outside now mm -hmm. with that stretched look out there. And mm -hmm. that that goes back to our true boss, our true yeah, boss team. Yeah. The original yeah. by personnel. Our original when we first put in our eight and nine zone. The boss was truly the back fullback on a strong safety. So you can, yeah, you can go right back to that. But you don't call that force when it's to the strong side? No. no. Yeah, run that anymore? What'd you call it? Full back on the force. That was our, uh, that was our true old boss scheme full we back. Now. And you don't do it anymore? No, we've we really gotten away from that because so much of our stuff now is Zeus. Okay, we don't even call Zeus anymore. It's just 38. And we, our flanker knows that he's got first yeah, yeah, he has the most yeah, we might have to use some short motion, yeah. you know, or bring him over, but he knows he's got the first four. Does he do that on his own? Just, I mean, I mean if y'all give him that flexibility, if he's sitting inside, he said, hey, you can't get the force from out here. Mm -hmm. That guy's sitting there tight. Mm -hmm. You may have some motion on him, they do that at night. Uh, only time uh, you call it. We, we have a young man, but we, we don't leave that to chance very often. Right. We're going to call it. We're going to call it. But we do have a young man, I think, that could do that. Uh, he could, you know, that would be our 81 at Vincent Jackson, but um, I don't feel very comfortable with it, so it's called. We use flanker short motion or flanker counter motion. We like to use a lot of counter motion. Softens this guy up. Yeah. 
okay? He's got to, excuse me, yeah, he's got to cross the center in our counter motion. He's got to cross here, and then he counters back. Boom. Now we got him on the force. Okay, so we use that. That's flanker counter motion. Or you can run it out of flip. You go 38, all right, zero weak, flip, 38, but we'll go F right. Okay, so now we're bringing our flanker back over for force. So we use a lot, you know, we're going to control the edge with our with our motion stuff. So we do there. Okay. But I think the big thing, again, just kind of surmise our overall schematics of this is if, if I leave you with one thing, and, and I'm truly, you know, my, my expertise is in, in the running game. It truly is in the running game. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, and I truly, really stick on that declaring the read. And that's why we use a lot of this stick slug. If I get a one technique player, my center is going to control that one technique. And I'm going to slug to that bubble. And I'm going to declare that read. And I hope you see it here on the film. All right. And then what do we do? You take care of the schematics on the on side. You get the stretch going. Now, man, you've got to look very carefully at your backside and the offensive line. Are they cutting? Are they expanding that backside? Because if they get a cut right now, think about it. You stretch this. So work with me here. I've stretched this. I've cut this off. Okay? You get a lot of defenses. What do they think they're doing? They think that that back is cutting back. He's not cutting back. He's just going yeah, he's just cutting up, but you expanded that back side with your cut block. And that's why we work those cut blocks every damn day. And, you know, I at one time, hell, we were in a drought for the last three years. I had to get mattress pads out there because the ground was so hard. We were just wrecking the hell out of our elbows and stuff and knees. And I had the kids working our cuts, you know, into a mattress pad. We got a little gymnastics pad. We put it out there, and, you know, there was an old one, so they could run on that and work their cut. And we, you know, we had to do it because it was, you guys don't shit down here, it's green as hell. But, man. Not in West Texas. We, uh, yeah, we had a scrimmage, uh, our very first scrimmage. Um, man, it was a dust bowl. It was so dry. So, you know, it was hard to work the cuts because our kids, you know, college kids can be there. They're always cutting them all cut up. I don't want to talk about that. So I said, well, we'll miss that in the ass. So the next day I brought out five of those big matches. <laughs> they were like, ah, shit, coach. <laughs> we were going to cut. All right, so that, that's, the, that's the keys to the schematics. You know, take care of that stretch, expand that backside with the cut. And, you know, Alex Gibbs, if he was here, you know, he'd tell you, um, you know, nine out of ten times, they're always going to incorporate that center working place oh, side. Like yeah, but now you get some boss concept doing? things well, in there. You can slow it down, work into the backside gap yeah, backer. You know, you can gap yeah. back and things like that. Well, no. But Alex is we'll big on that. Oh, yeah. All the drivers out there? Oh, okay. I'm going to have to show this to Coach Dalton. Well, yeah. we just got back up and running the other day. Are there oh. really some neat things you can do? Cause, yeah. uh, I hope I didn't screw you up with this. No, I was uh, trying like crazy. Because you can you can import things into it. Uh, mm -hmm. If we'd had more time, you know, uh, like you could take the formation, put it up there, yeah. and save it. Yeah. And then that's, that's what I was noticing over here, 15 of 15 already. Yeah, and you yeah. can take right it back. back to it. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And you can use templates, see where yeah. you, know, you can erase things and, and just have the formation drawn up. And I think blank, you just go blank right there below. Uh huh. And you don't have to save that thing, it just blanks it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to keep adding. And you can blank off what you don't want to, I guess. Right? Yeah, don't blank no more. Don't blank anymore. I'm not. I'm going back. Okay. Because we won't We're going to save it. I just anymore. hope that you can get something out of the points. Yeah. yeah, we can. <laughs> we'll save it.
Tom, so I readjusted my priorities a little bit. And go, what time you got to go? Family on Mondays, Tuesday, and Wednesday, football, all the rest of the days. <laughs> what time do I have to go where? Tom, Tom's oh. got a track meet today. Oh. Who? You going to leave it too? No, we'll leave it one twenty-five. Okay. Get over there. No, you guys, you truly, you think that helps you? You got some confidence in that eight and nine? Answer the questions you want. Well, as smart as we're, as smart as we're all at this point, we don't have any questions. We're not smart enough to handle. No, I, I, Tom is. I have that same. But Tom, same problem. as we get to be able to start to see it and learn it more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, our coaches uh, all set one and done their homework, and they they pretty much up on that thing. <laughs> Did he give you a copy? Uh huh. <laughs> what you been doing? Huh? <laughs> Got that video? We got drinking some brewski. Single, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Single, I just got yeah, where did I life a little bit? <laughs> where did I put that stuff? Sorry. At this point, I just need to hear it again and again and again. Not, Mine is running the crack of the ass. Uh, uh, run the crack of the ass. One read. You and you got to take it. You gotta have. You gotta find. You gotta find that kid. You gotta get Aaron to find this deal. He can feel it. You can't be an eighth grader running this play when we hit when we hit uh, district, you know. But he won't be. But that, I think that I really we definitely have to run this play at seventh and eighth grade level. Oh, okay. yeah. can, well, definitely at the eighth grade level. I think I think it could be I think it could be good if you could just get you have to get the whole line working together. That's what I'm saying. It can't, and it's going to take Coach Brando to actually come out there first period athletics instead of the Dolphins this year. That's huge because we can't have culture teaching it, but culture will teach him how to baseball. He will. He does not like to teach Tom anymore. He don't understand it. He's told it. So the day when we're out there, Dave Craig went off. He said, I'm not going to teach Tom all anything about it. I'm teaching how to baseball. So when we do run ISO, we always run ISO. We're always running ISO. So I'm going to let him come out there and teach Dave Craig. What do we have for that's breakfast. That's breakfast. Did you did you have did you get breakfast? Why don't we, we get a little uh, pizza hut and liver? Pizza hut and liver, a little uh, thick crust? Oh, huh? crust. You, you hear me talking? Nah, he's <laughs> talking about thick crust. Catch some fish this weekend or what? No, I'm paying for the day you go. Oh, yeah. Well, she My daughter is. usually go buy the truck mode, grow some nuts and just go buy it. I need to. You scared? Yeah, I'm scared. You wish your boat back, do I'm thinking about one. I'm gonna see the back door. But I, I wish I had one I had yes, you're correct. But I think it's the one I'm buying that first <laughs> thing tonight. If it stay there for another month Where and a half. Where are you at? Are you at the house? I'm at the house. Right Where's now. she at? Her parents. When it sells, I'll do it with my parents. Hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> stay there till you kick my ass out. <laughs> it's free. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah. They talk about maybe selling me the house the house in a couple of years. Well, I'll see where I'm at in a couple of years with life and money. And Probably on the third boat. Third boat. <laughs> it's supposed to be my fourth boat. What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> <laughs> the only bad thing is uh, <coughs> we have 32 right now. Eighth grade and I'm already going to eighth grade. Bro, five players. Right there. Yeah. No, yeah. He's no. He's the dead. Five no, players. You did that time? Five players. Yeah. Oh, sure. Five players. Yeah. He can come here and look at him, bro. He's just slow. We might not have enough to play now. Hey, we might have enough to play now. Who's about eighth grade? From eighth grade. Not this year. Two years from now. Is this three, sixty-something? In this year, we don't know how many more kids. This year, we have four, seven grade. He's 415 overall. He's 444 district. Nick is 5 one of the best At one point, he said he's 5 But he's getting one in a game. So, Hey, he wants to do your own good. But, uh, he's got that one Team batting average was like 256 overall. You got any more than pack two? You know? Yes, we had. We only heard four misses. Seven, four, two, eight, nine, nine. No, we two, four. We had four turning this one. Good. Let's so so bring it up a little bit. So I mean, so we knocked out the others. I don't know until I create. Coach Calder, the others, the others, the other calls, the others, not knocks because um, he buried those guys. Team is like two. We call that one seventy, two eighty, and district three twenty. 
Good. Way better than what we were. We're getting there. Getting there. We're getting there. We just don't know how to win. <laughs> oh, we're in, man. We're in. Ball is ball. Huh? At least we'll know you got it. Hey, which, which tape do you have of Alex Gibbs on the white zone? This one? Gilman. Oh, I got to send you another one. Oh, yeah? Oh, I yeah. didn't know there was another one. Yeah, it took me three years to find that one. Coach. Coach. Kate Halton coached in Denver for oh, yeah? four years, buddy. I got I got some Alex Gibbs tapes. I got about five of them. Three of them are on the white zone. They're different than that one. Oh, yeah. I'll send them to you. I'll double. I'll send them out. Don't tell me. I'll take you to the casino. Yeah. Let you borrow my wife for a little while. With <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you want it. Actually, I, I, I'm proof that a blind squirrel can find an acorn now and then. I just recently started dating a gal. Doggone. I hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> She's, uh, well, I'm going through one right now. With, uh, Victoria's Secret model for three years. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what she sees in me, but it's, right now it's a pretty good relationship. So I'm not complaining. I was real scary about that dating shit, though. He said disrespect you not He was head coach at Lubbock. Uh huh. And he was in Amarillo playing the games an hour and an hour and a half ago. So when he gets back from the game at night, his house is cleaned out and all four kids are gone. He, just, he never saw it coming, but it happened. Yeah. You know? And so now he's married another girl and for yeah. a long time, for 20 something years. And they, they two kids, so Good buddy of mine that I, I uh, coached with and taught with. Well, actually, I didn't coach with him, but uh, I'll tell you how I got to, to UNC. I came up and did my grad work up there. I was headed to CU, but didn't want to be a mail guy, you know, running the mail and washing cars. So I went up and interviewed for Dalton, and he hired me right away that day. I had to work, start to work the next day. But uh, I'll tell you what, <laughs> this guy that I was teaching with, and then I would go over, after I was done teaching at the junior high, I'd run over to the college. And my last hour was planning period. Long story short, I'd leave at 1 o'clock. I make all my two o'clock meetings and stuff. And this good buddy of mine that I taught with at the junior high, his name was Joe Filler. <laughs> he came home, he lived in a really nice trailer, double wide. He came home one afternoon, and all that was left was a suitcase and the stairs. Oh, wow. And he had a guy come out, take the jacks off, hook it up on. Big truck, truck. Y'all took it down the road. <laughs> Jeez, lovely. Oh, <laughs> he, said he, he came home and he saw a set of stairs leading up to the house in his suitcase. He knew it was over. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Jeff, what was your first clue? clue. <laughs> yeah. You need to get out of the car. Yeah. yeah. No labels, no consent. Yeah. Well, trying to make the I'm about to take marriage. It's what are you doing? Coach. What are you doing? Oh, it's been a sweet deal. So there is, there is life. Five-year go game. Is there is life after four. Well, years. Got yeah. Yeah. Life Kimball or somebody. Kirbyville. Was it was hard on me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was scheduled to leave for four years. I don't think anything within four I'm years. I'm just recently. Kirbyville. Going right on here. And it was up. You know, I I was never really wild. How long have you been at Coach? Reset. 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 Um, a little bit more in the yeah, spiritual I thirty minutes and stuff. That's no, I mean you want to make sure you got more because yeah, it was, it was, it was the path. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's got to be within, and you can't find it anywhere else. So, mm -hmm. I'm so it's, it's working out. It's getting better, but I'll tell you what. Yeah, you know, I, I still get yeah. that. Still Maybe uh, yeah, maybe we're social. We're working here. You like pizza? Coach Ellie, he's a 
very for him. But now they, they wait. I ain't got no time, and they taking it all up. I know we do. Tom needs to hustle. Hey, Why don't you say hello, Tom? Yeah. 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 Hey, I appreciate Coach Kilby. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen Macby's dad? Uh, <laughs> they said his father's dad's yoked, too. The the father said it, he says there's an arm. He said he's yoked. Is is Mac is a yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm going to be a big a big 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 We'll never go 38, 39 Mongo, because Mongo means weak and it's man blocking. Basically, Mo- Mongo's weak, man blocking, so we go 39 slash 38 Mongo, so we're running weak side here. And it's the, the, it's the wide zone weak. Okay? All right? So we're going to be running weak here. Pullback is here. Okay, he's the Wanda. This would Mike. This would be Sam. So Brandon, can you can you have another chair? Looks here like they're probably in cover five, okay? So our whiteouts are looking at it could be it could be eight. But it's you know going back to really incorporating the whiteouts reading the force. They've got to get the force cut off here. You see? You know, this looks pretty decent here. Watch the read here. Okay. We got it booked. Alright, so the pullback should have been outside of that. There's your read. Okay, since it's Mongo, it's more of a man scheme. That pullback's kind of a little flat. Yeah, coach. It is. Come right off the tackle. Yeah, but you guys I apologize here. We'll be hitting the wrong button a little bit. Yeah, a little flat. That's Adam Matthews. Okay, rushed for over 1,500 yards. A little bit of a dip in there. Okay, but you'll see it on the end zone. This is inner cut. Okay. So here we know we're running Mongo. It's man. All right, so we're going to gap here to Mike. Here's Wanda. Fullback is on the one. He's got the same reads. And our tackle's got to declare the end. Okay. Let's see if he does that. Okay, got him hooked. Good job here by the guard. Watch their steps. Now, since he has no help here. That's a good job by the guard. And that little, uh, lot of penetration right there on the on read the, man when he's got him hooked. Uh, yeah. And that's where you get that dip on that back. A little too much penetration, and, and you know you go back and you look at that. Let's see where he was if he was in a four eye. Okay, no, he's a he's that's a pretty tight tough. five technique. Okay, and I think he overstepped him a little bit yeah. and crossed way over. Okay, let's go back. You bring up a good point. Let's see if we can see it on the wide. Okay, just real quick. We'll see other shots. I won't run everything back, but. Um, let's see what he did here with his second step. Yeah, he might have, cr- you know, crossed it over too far. Watch the white outs. See, he got to him. Wasn't great, but he got there. Okay. Again, now we got 38 Mongo on. All right, so there's that fullback. There's a nice cut. That fullback. That's Ronnie Scott, 260 pound fullback. Are you pulling your guard? Really? That looks like it, but no, we're not. I don't like the. Uh, well, you know what? We might have thrown in. A, it's my center. I gave him the green light now and then. Okay. This guy had some feet, so he came all the way around to the backer. Looks <coughs> like a front we might see right there. 
How was that nine? Okay. All right, so full backs here. All right. For man here. And the center should be gapping here to here. And I believe this guy slanted in. Oh, center why didn't he, around it. Yeah, yeah, why didn't that gap just a game plan deal? Yeah, and then Nate LaRue, our offensive center, coach he had he thought he was a speed demon. <coughs> and on that weak side Mongo stuff, man stuff, he would sometimes horn it, what we call a horn. And so it was somewhat game plan. Okay, here we are, we're setting in a zero. Okay, so here's your flanker, there's your X, the true zero. Okay, run Mongo. So we're up top. Great job by left guard. Okay. Got to declare the read. Not bad. Oh, and hey, that's that's a that's a red shirt freshman. That left tackle now. Okay, go back and see what the guard did. In center. Oh, that's my starting center now. So we're beating these guys pretty bad. This is our second third teamers in. What's the coach at center up right there? Is that his fault? That, that guy's yeah. kind of getting across here. What? Yes, <coughs> Is he not flat enough? Yeah. Yeah, he didn't lose enough ground to gain ground. He's got a bad angle here. See? Bad angle. He didn't lose enough ground to gain ground. And the guard's pretty good here. I mean, on the gap. See that? Uh -huh. He pawed that off. Now he's cutting. And we're not very good on the backside here either. Is that because the... Are we passing it off this way because that guy is the inside shade on the guard? Mm-hmm. Now, if he was head up, you know, we we right. we work in the half, and the center would be actually exactly. And the center's got to come over and work that inside half. So the center here's got a bad. Well, because angle. right now he just yeah. he just really bumping on the center. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what the whiteout did. I mean, to be honest with you, man. The reason our run game exploded was because of these guys. That's a pretty good read on his part. I didn't finish. But that's a pretty damn good read on his part. Blocking that eighth guy. Did you go over backside guard mm -hmm. and tackle there? Mm hmm I will. Mm -hmm. I was expecting the, okay. the right the backside tackle mm -hmm. to be working to cut, and I thought the Backside guard will be coming off. Yeah, and we got some young guys in there. Let's see. <laughs> exactly right, Coach. They didn't handle it exactly the way you want it to be. See, this would be gap to here, pull back to here. All right. And now what they would call, since this guy's so far removed, it's still a B1. They're going to be a little bit stronger on it, okay? Because now they're B1 to here and not to a guy stacked right here. Let's see how they handle it. Poor by the guard, not getting. That's poor by the guard. Tackle's trying to get there. Yes, he was. Yeah. Now Western State, they ran, you know, eight man front on us all the time. Okay. So we had to go. Anytime we go Mongo, we go force call, and I, I didn't bring this up, and I need to bring it up now. Our fullback, even if we say called a a zero or a one, he always goes to a weak set. Okay, so he'll always motion to a weak set. Allows him to get out here. Pretty good cut by the back. So we should be here, gap into here, full backs here. Oh, excuse me, can't see him, but full backs there. So we've got a force block this, so we're gapping to here. Alright, and we got to reach this guy. That we're only on it? We all or don't we all? Now here's Tom where that get, get one sausage. left tackle mm -hmm. should cross over. Right. Okay. Got one technique. He's not really he's not like right. at all. Right. See his else. angle. I bet he's sitting here. He what? So he didn't quite get there. Uh -huh. Brandon, what's on the 
For Domino's? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm trying to talk a little football here. <laughs> I can stop the smorgasbord. I think it's 6886. They opened a new one. Yeah. 735. Yeah, here's, here's a good job. Buddy. Now, now you, you hold the same, the same rules about cutting it as Alice gives. You don't like to cut that. If I got it's a tight shade. Right. So you like to cut the guys in front of it. Right. I'm I'm same school with Alex. Okay. Yeah, same school. But really, that 75 should be cut on the back side. Yeah. Out the left or he should be. Uh, the inside, move the inside shade on. See it. He should be cut. Yeah, we see that front. <laughs> I know what he called right there. He wants the force. No answer? Yeah, then I'm on hold. Okay, so he's got to be here, all right, just by alignment, that back, knows that this ball should be outside, okay, so he's got to press that. Yeah, what's our rule for the end man on line of scrimmage here? Uh, Two pepperoni and one side. Uh, how does that tackle play? know that that's not his man, that's the force man? And if you let him to the field house. We, the quarterback, call the force. So he knows that that's his yeah. guy outside is going to be the force? Yep. Yeah, he's going out. And we know in our Mongo scheme, Mongo means man. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so, so with the force call, bingo. Yeah. He knows that he's got the force. The tackle should have got the back. And now what we should do here at the tackle, with this being a, almost a four eye, this tackle should have been climbing a little similar yes. to this backer. Because the fullback's here. Okay, these two have these two. And watch, if the tackle climbed a little bit earlier, we'd be in much better shape. Right. Okay. Should that tackle be chasing inside like that? No, sir. And that's what we were just talking about. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. See that hip disappear? See? And I don't like what he did there. He got turned inside and he's not going to get off in time. See it? We, out, we outran everything, but look at the backside. So these two to these two, okay, and we should be cutting on the backside. We've got some cuts. Big wide out. Sure, the quarterback's given a force call. Okay, they rolled. Why didn't you gap that? Three technique. Okay, one technique here, and we're Mongo. So that tells us, unless there's a force guy up here, which he's not, okay, we are going to Mongo, so the fullback is now here and we're able to gap back now, okay? So fullback is here. Now if it was force, we'd have to turn that into a gap, okay? But force was called off. So now we're gapping to here, all right? And we should seal, seal. Good cut back side. Overtaking cut, and then we preach about that, not bad. I like that one right there. We can do that. We can do that. We can back around that. I think so. Get a little coach, you know. Yeah, I gotta give you a little shove because that looks like an ISO to you, but I know you love that play. That's the job I've seen on the top. Yep. Now here, now we're getting to where you start to see some declare. This is our starting left tackle. Okay, watch here. Boom. Great declare. See that? Bring the back to you. Watch the steps here. Although he's a little slow, I like the way he's staying square and he's stretching the three. See it? Now the hat should be outside. Now with this being Mongo, okay, 
Kevin, you were asking earlier, puts the full back here, uh -huh. and we're able to gap back. Okay. Good and cut. Yeah, it's just a gang plan, though. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Watch the cuts backside. Uh -huh. How about that wheel? Like Good job by the fullback. Backside backer. How about that? This wide out's got to get to him. <laughs> got to try. That's Jamar. Jamar Fires, he's a JC kid um, out of Snow Junior College. And I'll tell you what, the harder they're hitting, the lighter he's a splitting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't like the angle of the center here. Okay. This is still Mongo. Okay. We got a backside problem. Whoa, baby. Look at that thing. See where that backside problem came from. So what what's what's the bad that part back of the center? What's the uh watch his angle. See? He's not He's, see how his shoulders are turned? Uh -huh. I want him to lose more ground and get over here. I want him to think in this scheme of things that he can reach that three. Okay. Okay. So he's too much uh, yeah. at the hip right now. Yeah. And he wants to he wants to chase that. Seeing that hip was there, he should declare that. Boom and work out. We were doing on the backside. Oh, the backside guard did a very good job. But no, he did. Tell back how to make that cut, shouldn't it? Why, why are you not chopping the three with that backside tackle, letting the tight end have that five to chop him and yeah. send the guard off to the backside backer? Right. Yeah. Is that what is that what you should? Yeah. Okay. Well, this is something you know. This is our Mongo scheme. So Mongo means man. All right. He's here. He's here with a gap and fullbacks here. So now no, what really about is working back to that back side. So yeah. And so now what? Backside well, we're, backer. We're gapping right. here to here. Right. Yeah. So, so now we can we can we can start out on those seal seals back too. and sift. He should be sifting. Okay, so it's man scheme. Mongo means man. Weak side man. Pullbacks here. We gap here to here. Okay. Seal, seal, sift. So the center backside guard in. Yep. And this is terrible. Tailback ought to make the cut. Yeah. And this is terrible. But that, that's, that's terrible. not a cut guy, right? Uh, it's. When he moves back outside where he's looking in front of me, right? I, now I'll just stay up and just cut off. Yeah. I should wall it oh, off. You're damn right. And this is terrible. It's it's not good by the guard. That's why you don't you don't chop yeah. somebody that's, that's staring at it. Yeah. yeah. You got leverage on him while chopping. That's right. Center turn to his shoulders. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's a young center, but he's gonna have to grow up. He's my starting yeah, center. Yeah, see, they've all been here to hear you, so the now they all know how to coach offensive line. So. <laughs> well, a lot and of see, I don't like what the tight end did. All right, I don't like it at all. Okay, the tight end. If he didn't call sift, he needs to be down here. Okay, and the tackle should be working up. Everybody should be in a full scoop mode. All right, and I don't like what he did. We're gonna leave a guy. That's that's not good. This against Florida Atlantic. They went to the semifinals, lost to Delaware. Okay, now this is a pretty good scheme here with Mongo. This is what we call trio, our trio scheme, and we saw this in game planning, all right, that they had a tendency they'd bring force, and they'd slant, okay? In this case, slant is strong, angle is weak, so they were slanting their line. So we just said we're going to full scoop trio mm -hmm. this. And our tackle should have climbed a little earlier, mm -hmm. okay? And fullbacks out here on force. Tailback dipping. Yeah, he did that dip a little bit. No, he did, Coach. Does it? Yeah, he does dip a little bit. See it? He dipped a little bit. Now that one right there, would you prefer you to pull back to hit him up high, or? I mean, yeah, good question. And with with Ronnie Scott, I tell you what, I was smart enough not to out coach that kid, because man, he could he could cut block like nobody's business. And then when he got tired of cutting you. He would hit you in the mouth. So I didn't say much to, to, to Ronnie. I was really confident in the fact that he could cut a guy. But to answer your question, because I know you're getting to a good point here, you know, with that kind of leverage, I'd prefer he'd stayed up. 
Yeah, I think it gave, it gave us a little bit running, better crease there. Here's the guy you want to watch. That guy here was able to control some declare and reads. And yeah, he, he just ran a 439. He ran it inside. Track spikes. Okay, here's a good example. Watch. Okay, the guard. See how he stays square? He's chasing that hip, right? Watch what happens to the hip. Now climb. Now he didn't finish very well. And he did a good job here. So